going to party with the Holy Spirit. Who's excited to worship Jesus Christ? Isn't he wonderful? Didn't he pay the highest price for us to have freedom? Oh, he's so worthy tonight. Oh, come on. We just welcome our live stream viewers at home. We just, oh, we just invite you guys. Just step into that presence. If you're at home tonight, I just want to encourage you. Get up off your seat. Stand up to your feet and press into the oil that God is releasing tonight through the portal of the live stream. Position and posture your hearts. Come on, there's a breakthrough tonight in the uh, in the atmosphere. Oh Jesus, we just worship you. Oh, we just love you. Come on, everybody in the house. Just begin to pray in the spirit. Just begin to lift up your heavenly language. Just begin to lift up your voice to Jesus. Just open wide your heart right now to the King of Glory that he will come in tonight. Lord, we ask you, we want you, Jesus. We want you. You're why we're here tonight, Lord. We don't just come to sing songs. We don't just come to jump around, God. Lord, it's an expression of our gratitude. It's an expression of our love for you. It's an expression, God, of how grateful we are for everything that you gave. You gave your whole life for us, Lord. And it's our privilege, it's our honor to lay our lives down for you. It's our privilege, it's our honor to stand in awe of you. It's our honor to worship you in spirit and in truth. We choose this day to worship you. Oh, I was in prayer and I just felt the Lord give me this scripture tonight in Matthew 16. And it's when Jesus is talking to his disciples and he asks them, Who do men say that I am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. I just feel that the Lord says tonight he's releasing encounters. We just release, Lord, just revelation, God. The spirit of revelation tonight. Oh, God, that you will release revelation. That you will give understanding of the Christ. And then, Lord, as your sons and daughters you as they encounter you that God that God there will be a new name given to them tonight there will be a fresh identity release we thank you for just the keys of the kingdom God be released in this house tonight <laughs> Jesus come on you guys just press into him right now just lift up your own voice come on just look at him lift up your eyes Lift up your heads, you ancient gates. Just look unto heaven. Look unto the King of glory tonight. God, we come with humility. We come with humility tonight. And we just say, we want to know you. We want to know you. We want to know you. The Your word says this is eternal life. Tonight, 
as you lift him up that there's an increasing breakthrough tonight just don't hold back your praise worship worship the king of glory tonight come on we just give him praise Ya rabba 
heart say, there is one thing I desire. There's one thing that I see. There is one thing that I see. Come on, sing that with me. There is one thing. There is one thing I desire. Say there is one thing I desire. Oh, 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 there is one thing that I see. Sing it with me. There is one thing I desire. There is one thing that I see. To be whole.
tonight we're going to ascend into the holy realm into the glory realm and he says is anyone ready to go into the glory realm where anything is possible everything you need is in the glory everything with me everything I need everything I need is in your glory that's it come on every it's descending right now is in your see everything I need is in your glory Something just shifted. We just went to the holy of holy place. Welcome to the glory realm. We're about to go on a journey into the glory realm. And it's for this reason I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. That you would grant to us, Lord, according to the riches of your glory everybody say to the riches of your glory to be strengthened with power through your spirit in our inner man that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the height the depth the breadth and the length every dimension of who you are lord To know the love of Jesus that surpasses knowledge. That we may be filled up to the fullness of God. Fill us, Lord, with the knowledge of your will. With all spiritual wisdom and understanding. That word in Colossians that word will in the Greek it's actually thelema everybody say thelema you know the translators and sometimes you can read the Bible and the translations of the Bible and it kind of just fill me with the knowledge of your will that's kind of dry that's kind of cut and dry but if you trans if you go into the translations if you study it out thelema means his pleasure it means his desire and his delight so what you're really saying Lord how much easier does that make it fill me with the knowledge of your pleasure and I feel that the Lord wants to fill us tonight with the knowledge of his pleasure And all who are thirsty, come, 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 come to Jesus and drink. The Lord has a drink for everyone in the room tonight. Who wants to get drunk tonight? I feel the Lord is pouring out wine tonight. The Lord says tonight, I'm going to cause your cup to overflow, overflow, overflow. And to all who have a need, that need will be satisfied tonight, says the Lord. For he who is, he who called you is faithful to complete. So come feast at my table, says the Lord.
glory. Multiplication power. Say all I need. Think all I need is in your glory. In the glory realm. In the glory realm. All I need is in your glory. All I need is in your glory. All I need is in your glory. <laughs> sing this with me. We sing. You are my shepherd. I shall not want. You restore my soul. You lead me on and surely goodness and loving kindness they will follow me forever. Sing, you are my shepherd. Say, you are my shepherd. I shall not want. Sing it out. I shall not want. You restore my soul. You restore my, you lead me on. Say, you lead me on. Surely goodness, surely good. Loving kindness, say, loving kindness. They will follow me forever. They will follow me forever. My shepherd say, You are my shepherd. I shall not want you restore, you restore my soul. You lead me on, you lead me on, and surely good and loving kindness and loving kindness. They will follow me, they will follow me. Sing, I will dwell. Sing, I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. All the days of my sing it out. Sing, I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Sing it again, I will dwell, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. All the days, of, come on, declare it over yourself, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days. Sing that again. Oh, only to be whole. Your beauty. Sing. Only to be whole. Your beauty. Only to be whole. Your beauty. Only to be whole. Only 
are the seeds I lay that become the trees from which my children will eat. Consecrated generations, the lines have fallen in pleasant places, an inheritance so beautiful, a house of prayer built in flesh and blood. Say my family, my family will dwell in the house. Prophesy over your family all the days of their lives, all the days of their lives. My family, my family will dwell in the house. All the days, all the days. All the days uh, sing, my children will dwell. My children will dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of their life. All the days of their life. My children, my children will dwell in the house. My children and their children and their children will dwell. Children, my children will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of their life. All the days of their life, my children will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of their life. All the days, sing, I will dwell. I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, all the days of my life. Say, I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, all the days of my life. children my prophesy all the days of their life all the my descendants will dwell sing this out sing my descent all the days of their lives all the days He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of family covenant. And all it takes is one mother, one father to come into alignment, to come into holy relationship covenant with the Lord. And it sets that one individual up. It sets their family up. It sets their children up. And the provision of heaven, you open the doors of provision. When you come into alignment and say, Lord, Lord, I will dwell in your house all the days of my life. My whole life is yours, Lord. You are my shepherd. I shall want for nothing. You lead me by the quiet waters. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, Lord, for you are with me. I consecrate my life to you, Lord. I dedicate my children to you, Lord. I will dwell, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of I will 
forever David looked up to the heavens and said I will dwell in your house all the days of my life and there is one thing I desire and this one thing will set my life up and it will set my children's lives up it will set my descendants lives up and it will actually establish it will establish your kingdom and your will in the earth and my descendant, the root of David, Jesus, will sit on the throne of David forever. How important, how much does God love it when we just say we love him? When we just say you're all, all we need. I prophesy to you right now that through the, the frequency and the, the, the portal of this song, there's, some, there's a generational anointing. But there's also a provisional anointing. There is the storehouses of heaven are being opened up right now into finances, into bank accounts, onto the tables. I see banquet tables being filled. And moreover, David said, I will dwell. And there's one thing I desire of the Lord, to look at you and to know you. And it, it established his bloodline. It established the kingdom and the will of the Lord for generations to come. But it also established his nation for years and years and years. It established his nation. Lord, we thank you right now for the provision of heaven. And we thank you that we have established our bloodline. We have consecrated ourselves first because kingdom comes from inside out. We establish our spirits, our hearts towards you and you alone. And you are establishing our families. You are establishing our, our marriages. You are establishing California. You're establishing San Diego. You're establishing America as we simply look at you. All that's required is to look at him. For now we behold with unveiled faces the glory of the Lord. Becoming more like him. And moving from dimension of glory to dimension of glory. But you see, it's all that's required is to look at him. Is it really that simple? Unite our hearts in love, Lord, that we might attain to the full assurance that comes from the understanding. All the riches of the full assurance of understanding resulting in the true knowledge of God's mystery who is Christ himself, in whom are held all the riches of wisdom and knowledge. To access the riches of glory, you first have to access the mystery of heaven, who is Christ himself. I'll put it to you this way. Everything you need you will get everything you need and all will be satisfied when you gaze into the eyes of eternity. We look into the eyes of eternity tonight, the eyes of Jesus.
yeah, we're going deep now. Come on, come up, come up, come up. Oh. Just speak out in tongues. Stir up the spirit. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. sing to him he wants to hear you we sing to rejoice take joy my king say take joy on him tonight. Sing all the elders. Of God and sing. Come on, every voice, all the saints, lift him up tonight. Oh. The glory is swirling through the room right now. We bow, we bow. Lift your hands, sing you're worthy. You are worthy.
just take 30 seconds begin to lavish worship on him oh Day and night.
sing it again, oh, sing day and night, night and day, let
front upon the praises of your people we exalt and lift high the name of Jesus you alone the desire of the nation every people tribe and labor will forever sing your praises sing all glory all honor and Lord
How wonderful you are. Diamond of my heart, say the diamond of my heart. Let's sing that to him one more time. Jesus, Jesus, sing Jesus. Wonderful you are. How wonderful you are. Sing his name, Jesus. Sing Jesus. 
diamond of my heart. Say, majesty Again, behold the King of Kings. Behold the King of shining in His glory. Worship Him. Shining in His glory. Clothed in majesty. Clothed in beautiful and holy. We sing. found worthy, the only one found worthy, with all that is within me, with all that is within me, I lift my hands and sing, I lift my hands and, come on, can we sing that one more time, behold, behold, His glory, we sing, shine, clothed in majesty, clothed in majesty, beautiful and holy, sing, beautiful and holy, precious Lamb of God, pray. The only one found worthy. The only one found. With all that is within me. With all that is me. I lift my hands and sing. I lift my hands and sing. Hallelujah.
shout to the Lord. Oh. Your power, your glory, your glory. I have seen you. I have seen in your sanctuary. Hey, your power. Wow, something's about to invade this room right now. I can feel the pregnancy. We're about to press into glory right now. We're shifting into a deeper dimension right now. Into the beauty. His beauty is invading this room. His beauty is invading this room. And sickness and disease is fleeing seven ways. There's healing in the room. There's healing in his presence. Signs, wonders, and miracles in the glory. There's healing in the glory. There's healing in the glory. But just look at him. Say, I've seen you. Say, I have seen in your sanctuary, in your sanctuary, your power, your power, your glory, your glory. I have seen you. I have your sanctuary in your your power your your glory your glory sing it one more time I've seen I have in your sanctuary your power your glory Whoa! You. so I will lift my hands I will lift my hand glorify your name glorify your as long as I have breath as long as I have breath I will sing your praise I will your prayer I will lift my hands I will lift my hands. glorify your name by your name as long as I have breath as long I will sing, I will sing, I have seen you, I have seen you in your sanctuary, in your, your power, your power, your glory, your glory, I've seen you, I have your sanctuary. Power, your glory. So I will lift my hand. So I will lift my hands and glorify your. Come on, step into this. As long as I have breath, I will. I will sing your praise. I will lift. I will lift my hands. Glorify your. As long as I have breath, Lord, I will sing your praise. Let your glory fill this room right now, Lord, filling every heart.
glorified, be glorified forever. Come on, lift. Be glorified. Look at him. Be glorified. Be glorified. of the throne room forever sing be glorified heavenly hosts be glorified heavenly beings praise the lord be glorified and forever for with every hand lifted every voice shout out
just look to him right now Jesus in your light we see light we your people Jesus are hidden in you ha 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 We, your people, are hidden, hidden in you. Do you know, I saw the other night, I didn't think I was going to share this, but I saw the other night, as I was just praying in the midst of worship, and my heart was going out for people around the globe. And I said, Lord, do something. For the victimized, do something. And he said, Miranda, don't you see my side? This wound is for them. This wound is for the people. It's proof of his love. The place where the blood and water poured out is proof of his love blood for the atonement the water of his spirit poured out for people and as I reflected on this and pondered on this through the night I kept being taken back into it. 
And all of a sudden, I saw nations be pulled into that wound. And all of a sudden, I saw a globe. I saw the world sucked in like a vortex, sucked into the wound, sucked straight into his heart. He said, Miranda, don't you know this wound is for them? This wound is proof of my love, my love poured out for the world that all would be saved. His desire is for nations. His desire is for you. And even as we're sucked into the throne room, and as we're caught up in the glory, can't you help but in his light see lights for the world? that's covered in darkness. Can't you help but see his blood poured out for the unruly, for the wicked and the perverse, for the victim and the traumatized, for the orphan and the widow and the poor. Jesus, In the midst of his glory, we see him, and we are hidden in him. But in the midst of being hidden in him, we're caught into his heart. (laughs) See, we're drawn. If you are hidden with him, if you're hidden in Christ, you're hidden in his heart. See, it's not a matter of Jesus on the outside walking beside us. Of course, the Holy Spirit moves with us and walks with us. But it's not a matter of Jesus on the outside. He sucked us into his heart. (laughs) It's a completely different way of living. When you know that you're in Christ, like John 15, When you're abiding in him, not some external relationship. No, when you're sucked into his heart, into who he is, then his lifeblood flows through you and it cannot help but flow out of you. The river that proceeds from his throne, if you are caught up in him and if you dwell from within him if you are living within his heart that river that proceeds from the throne it begins to flow through you love and mercy and grace oh the spirit flowing freely through you giving you eyes to see ears to hear ha 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 ezekiel 47 revelation 22 the river that proceeds from his throne where there's the tree on either side oh it bears fruit in every season the leaves are for the healing of the nations and everything caught in the river lives ha ha So I want you to get caught into his heart tonight. Come on, for a few moments. Think not externally, like Jesus is out here. Or we have to do something to get into the throne room. Listen, we're there. But it's not a matter of reaching something. It's a matter of entering into the place where you should be living from. You've been sucked into his heart. If you abide in him, he abides in you. Oh, just let that sink in tonight and begin, oh, begin to let your love overflow as you're caught in him, one with him. It's oneness. And out of the place of that oneness, that love flows for nations. Oh, 
oh God, make us one. One with you, Lord. One with you, Lord. One with you, Lord. We don't want an up and down relationship where some days we feel like we're with you and other days we feel like you're over there on the back burner, on the side, behind us, whatever. We know you're before, you're in front of us and behind us and beside us, Lord. But more than that, we are in you and you are in us. Lord, let that sink in tonight. Make us one. and burn everything that would hinder perfect union that would hinder perfect love to your perfect love that casts all the shadow of your wing, Lord, I hide away in sin. So let me go deeper in your shadow. Let me go deeper in your shadow.
Christmas is here a little early. Right now I'm handing you a gift from heaven. And you'll unwrap it over the next seven days in the secret place. For I'm breaking your heart for what breaks my heart. I am breaking your heart for what breaks my heart. Oh, I'm breaking your heart for what breaks my heart. Oh, I'm rolling over you. I'm crushing you. But it's a sweet, sweet, sweet surrender. It's a sweet crushing, like a father. The father is pulling you deeper into his emotions. And he's anointing your head with the oil of a matriarch. The oil of the mother to many.
He says you're a matriarch in the spirit. And you have the spirit of wisdom and discernment and direction and revelation and knowledge and counsel is yours. Counsel is yours. And the strategies that you've operated in in the past, I'm going to breathe new life upon them. And you're going to see a new path. And the things you're already planning and already doing, they're going to be bigger and better than you could ever imagine. But watch as I reveal a new pathway, and then a new pathway, and then a new pathway. Because your ministry is expanding deep and wide. As I open up your eyes, he says, oh, I am your father. And there's a matriarch anointing, the oil of a mother, the oil of a lover. And I'm breaking your heart for what breaks my heart. I'm breaking your heart for what breaks my heart. Mother to many. Sarah. Mother to many. There's an anointing coming on your hugs. <laughs> There's a healing anointing that's coming on your loving embrace. Says the Lord. There's even a healing. I feel it right now. There's a healing taking place. Healing oils going down to the deep, deep places. It's the oil of grace. The oil of healing. When no one sees and no one knows Where your thoughts they seldom go And he says but I see and I know And this place is where I go To restore and to unfold, to restore, to unfold, you're fully seen, you're fully known, there's an angel of healing in this room, there's a spirit of healing in this room.
that healing oil now. Come on, as he releases it all over the room. Yeah. Healing yeah. in your heart, in your body. Yeah, yeah. Come on, his wounds are for your healing. Yeah. Healing to every place. Healing in your mind, in your will, in your emotions, in your physical body, in your relationships. Oh. Yeah. Lord, let that healing oil flow right now. Yeah. Healing Come on. Oil. Someone's getting healed of carpal tunnel right now. Someone's getting healed of the effects of a car accident right now. Someone, when you were a little girl, you were abused. A father figure. God's healing you right now. One in the deep place. deep place. Just receive that right now in your heart. Oh. Yeah. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of grace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pour in like a flood. <laughs> Pour in like a healing oil. Pour in over every heart. I see, I see a heart right now that's been like tar. You tried to bury things. It's like one thing after another. It's been, it's just been this layering, like tar, layering patches. But the Holy Spirit comes right now and peels away the false covering. the false sealing, and he becomes the sealing, the seal of your heart. I see him like warm oil pouring into the cracks right now, the dry cracks of someone's heart right now, where it was life where it was dry, where it's been hardened, yeah. calloused, cracked. He's pouring in with healing oil, fresh healing oil, softening your heart, making it pliable again. And there's an eye salve. Fresh eyesight, spiritual and physical, scales coming off, and eyes up, healing oil, eyes to see.
physical healing. Someone's tailbone is being healed right now. And someone with plantar fasciitis being healed yeah. right now. And in the ankle being healed right now. But I see in the toes, <laughs> the bones in the toes right now being healed had pain there, I want you to just begin to move those toes around, move your feet around, that healing, oh, let it flow right into your feet right now, in Jesus' name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right in. <laughs> right in. Thank wow. you. Thank you. God, I thank you right now, scoliosis, being healed right now, yeah. that scoliosis, Straighten in the name of Jesus. Oh, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus, that spirit of infirmity cannot stand. I thank you. We pull it right out right now. In Jesus' name, I thank you for that back being straightened where the scoliosis was. I thank you. I thank you for healing virtue, healing oil, alignment right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, that car accident, it's in the neck. You still have had that stiffness, that tightness, the vertebrae right around the neck. I want you just being to move your neck around right now. We thank you, Lord, for that healing touch. That healing oil, we speak to that neck, we speak to the vertebrae. We command it to align in Jesus' name for a loosening. A loosening where that tension was in the neck in Jesus' name. The effects of that car accident, even trauma into the head, we command that to go for healing to come forth in Jesus' name. Thank you. Come on, Jesus. Come on, just check your body right now. Just check your body, see how you're feeling. See if there's a looseness, that tension left. Come on, just shake it out. You guys are like in the glory stupor. <laughs> Come on, who just felt a release? Come on, thank you, Jesus. Several of you. Yeah, wave, if you just felt a release, if there was a healing that just touched you. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Several of you. You want to come? Jeremy wants you to come give a testimony. <laughs> what is Jesus doing? Come on. I had the neck vertebrae issue. I knew it was you. Ah, come on, Jesus. And I just, I, I honestly, even just if I sit on the ground for too long, it gets really stiff just because the pressure all the way up my spine. And so I was really tight up here just from sitting with the Lord on the floor last night. And then I was sitting and I just started moving it and it just started loosening. But then I just paused and I felt the warm oil come in. Amen. It just feels completely loose. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What did he do for you? Um, I fractured my ankle last year and the pain comes and goes. And all day today it's been hurting. It's been stiff. And when you were praying, I just started shaking it and believing and I don't feel anything anymore. Come on. That was a fracture. Wow. Amen. Come on. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. What did he do for you? Well, my arm, I fractured that, and it usually hurts a lot. And, like, I was just moving it around and stuff, and it doesn't hurt anymore. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Who else just received a touch? Who else just received a healing? Come on, just check your body, see how you're feeling. It's flowing through someone else's arm right now. That healing, I feel like this, there's something about 
in the nerves in the arm where it's like all of a sudden your arm kind of goes dead. Like you get pain, but there's like this deadness. It happens from the, the nerves, I believe. Who's this? Who's this person? Well, just wave. If, if, you have an, if you have this issue with the arm that just like, it's like dead nerves. I want to pray for you if that's you. It's online. Tatiana said, it's me. Tatiana? Yeah. Come on, Lord, we thank you right now for Tatiana. Father, we thank you right now into her arm that healing oil flows. Right now we speak to those nerves. We speak life into those nerves right now in Jesus' name. We speak life. We command that arm to come to life. No more pain, no more deadness, no more limpness, no more all of a sudden it's like weak. God, we speak life, strength, healing virtue into that arm right now in Jesus' name. Tatiana, just begin to move and check it out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on. Come on, just, just, just put your hands up for a moment. God, we thank you. <laughs> for that intimate realm. Yeah. That realm of your love, of your grace. Ah. We thank you for that oil just being poured from head to toe into people's bodies and hearts right now. God, I thank you for a fresh anointing. Yeah. Father, we thank you for a fresh anointing being released in this place, being released on your people, those online. Father, we thank you for a fresh oil of intimacy in this season. God, we thank you. It's a new season, a fresh season of intimacy, of hearing your word. I feel this right now that he's open, opening spiritual ears to hear. Some of you have felt like it's been just dull, like you haven't been hearing the Lord clearly. It's a fresh season. Father, I thank you for that hearing, that ability to hear your voice, his sheep hear his voice. So God, I thank you for ears being opened, eyes being open, hearts being in tune with you, Holy Spirit. And most of all, Lord, that hearts would be so in tune with your love. Lord, we want to be those people that live from the place, inhabitants in your heart. We want to be the dwellers, the inhabitants of your heart. Let us live from that place of habitation. Wow. Not merely visitation. God will take all the encounters, all the visitations that you want to give us. But God, let us be a people of habitation, of abiding, of dwelling. And God, that from that place, God, that we would be your vessels that would pour forth your oil, your love, your grace, your joy, your presence, your light, your life to the world around us. So God, here we are. 
your people. Just tell him, I'm yours, Lord. <laughs> oh, God, we want to know you so much more, so deeply, so intimately, and be known by you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, here we are, God. Father, have your way in us. Holy Spirit, have your way in us tonight and always. But tonight, God, have your way in us. Continue to speak to us. Move in our midst. Move in our heart, in our lives, in our minds, God. For your name's sake, for your glory, in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord praise tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Abba, Father, we love you. Hallelujah. Come on, God is good all the time. God is good, amen. Wow, wasn't that good? Woo! Who knew that we would go from up here to in here? <laughs> from high to deep. <laughs> But how many know that's how, that's how it works in the glory? He takes us on a journey. Woo! <laughs> wow. Can we give Stevie a big God bless you? Man, so rich. Thank you. <laughs> Aren't you blessed? So blessed. I'm going to come down here. Man, I feel so enriched. Right, right. <laughs> Woo. God is good. It's good to be with you. I'm Miranda Nelson. <laughs> I am. I love that TJ is always affirming my name. <laughs> oh, it's it's great to be with you. 1794, 1794, the fire and glory outpouring. Come on, we've been here a while. <laughs> and uh, we're not going anywhere. Well, we kind of are. We're, we're transitioning to another place. But how many know that we're carrying the glory? Amen. We're so grateful for the time. A good long season that we've had here at Grace. Oh, we're so grateful. We love Pastors Brian and Melissa Bauer, and um, just, it's been an honor to run with them and be here, and um, they're great friends, and so we're also excited to have our own spot, and uh, so we will be breaking it in, I think, New Year's Eve, but more to come on that, <laughs> um, but it's exciting times, amen? Amen. We live in exciting times. Do you realize that? Do you realize that the darker the earth gets, the brighter his glory, Jesus' glory shines? And the brighter God's people get? <laughs> Isn't that exciting? Woo! It's so exciting. And so, listen, we are excited about what God is doing here in San Diego County. Um, and we're also excited about what he's doing in the nations. We're going to continue to take the, the glory to the nations in 2024. we got some exciting places on the agenda. We're going back to Malawi. We always hit a different spot, though, so don't worry. Every time we go to a, a same place, a same country, we don't go to the same place. We go to different places that haven't had the gospel. So we're really excited to go back to Malawi. Uh, we also have Burundi, which we're really, I'm really excited about. we got a well going up there there and uh, just a lot of really good stuff. Um, that was a, that was a, the, the first time we were there. We've been there once before and um, we were there in uh, uh, 2022 and it was such an impactful trip. It's where I think we hit a million souls, something like that. <laughs> Is that right? Am I right on that? I think that's when we hit the million yeah. soul marker. Um, <laughs> and uh, so that was really exciting. 
But um, yeah, it does all blend together. I don't know. Anyway, it was a remarkable trip. <laughs> and so I'm really excited to go back there. We're also going back to Madagascar. And we're hitting Nigeria next year, which is also going to be just amazing. It's probably going to be our biggest one next year, most likely, um, as of right now. So um, that is going to be awesome. And some other stuff that's probably going to pop up uh, as well. So just, you know... Stay in the know. <laughs> and uh, you can always email Jen Missions at ElishaRevolution.com uh, to just get updated on information. And of course, go to our website, ElishaRevolution.com. By the way, I don't know if many of you know um, right now what was our missions um, kind of link there um, that normally has our, you know, where you can register for the upcoming trips. Right now, we actually have recaps. So all of our kind of, re well, from 2023, our recap videos are up there. We have photos up there. So I don't know if any of you have seen that. We've not talked about it, but it's up there. Uh, so if you ever want to get a glimpse of some of the photos and the trips, um, just go to LashRevolution.com, and it's there on um, the missions link. And so uh, feel free to do that. Um, one more announcement that I'll give, and then we're going to get Jeremy up here. But we have next weekend. How many of you guys have enjo been enjoying this weekend? Woo! It's just been so, so, so rich, so deep. Amen. Um, next weekend, we have Samuel Robinson with us, which is going to be amazing. You guys mostly uh, probably are familiar with him. He is a great, great friend, a uh, powerful revivalist. You never know what's going to happen. Usually, he'll, prophe he'll always prophesy. <laughs> and um, just, just a, an amazing man of God. And so you're not going to want to miss. Get out here Thursday through Sunday. We will be here. Um, and that's going to be amazing. Amen. Awesome. Well, without further ado, Jeremy Nelson is going to come and minister. Come on, give Jesus a big shout. Come on, you guys be seated in the oil. <laughs> come on, that was one of my favorite transitions, seriously. I mean, like we've, we've done... 1,794 of them plus daytime transitions, but come on. Whoo. I mean, listen, give the worship team a big hand. Man. I love it. I, I'm, listen, we could have just done that all night long. I'd have been fine. I'm like, you know, I, I, I love revival. This is why we do these meetings is the whole point is to get into the Holy Ghost. Come on, to get into the presence of God. And some people come and they're like, you know, when's the next part going to happen? I'm like, you just got to discern what's happening. Right? How many know God never does the same thing twice, but he always does things in a different way, in a different pattern. And if we're not careful, we can miss what he's about to do. And uh, listen, that was amazing. I mean, like, I, I think it's the first time I've ever seen Miranda get up and she got a prophetic word while uh, doing transition. And then, this, uh, uh, I mean, listen, this is why we bring in the, the, the prophets, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, and then all of a sudden it bounced from her to everyone else and uh, miracles breaking out. And what's funny is I told I told Miranda earlier today, I said, healing's going to break out in the transition. Remember that? And, uh, and, and so anyway, praise God. Uh, the Lord loves me enough that he fulfilled the word I said to my wife. Uh, you know, otherwise, she'd be like, you were a false prophet about that. But <laughs> now nah, she wouldn't do that. But anyway, you guys good? Come on, we're about to jump into this thing here in a minute. Uh, I, I want to just give you guys a praise report. Uh, you guys know Miranda mentioned it. We have a new spot. Come on, somebody. <laughs> And uh, we're going to be, we're, we're trying to get in there by New Year's Eve uh, and, and, you know, just crank out the, the next year, you know, first thing in the new place. And, and uh, I want to just uh, thank you guys, those of you watching online, those of you in the room, many of the, the business people in the community. Uh, listen, we are already 80% to like everything paid for, funded. Come on, somebody. I mean, listen, we got the new chairs are already in the building. We've, we've already ordered a big screen, same size as this one. It's on its way for next week. I mean, listen, uh, you know, we got about 60% of our sound system and all the stuff there. And um, we, we still need to get lights and, uh, you know, a, a whole bunch of other stuff as well. But uh, how many know that's pretty fast for two weeks? Come on, somebody. And, and you know, it tells, me, it tells me that God's excited, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of times you can tell if God's in on something because of the favor. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of people, they got a lot of vision, but there ain't no flavor of favor. Come on, someone. 
And I, I'm telling you, some people just got a bad taste in their mouth. But God wants to wipe the bad taste out of our mouths as a church. And he wants our flavor to become favor. Come on. He wants us to taste and see that the Lord is good. And uh, that's what we're seeing. And so, you guys, uh, I said it the other week. Um, I, I said probably for a couple more Sundays, we're going to be, uh, you know, receiving an offering to glorify the house of his glory. And uh, just believe God that we can fully get in uh, by the, the time that we need to get in now. Here's one thing I will tell you. Is just pray. Uh, one of the things we're praying is we'll pray that all the stuff for the sound system, we can purchase it and get it in on time. Because some of the stuff, they're like, that's like a four-week wait. I'm like, nah, we'll send some angels. They'll be like, oh, we just got one transferred from Fresno. And I'll be like, yeah, you did. And Because uh, uh, we're, we're getting in there. That's what we're believing. But uh, intimacy with God and obedience to his voice releases a manifestation of the kingdom. So you guys can bring out uh, the, the box. Uh, you can put it up here. And uh, we, ha we have a treasure box here uh, that, that we put out. And uh, it's for storing up treasures in heaven. Come on, somebody. And uh, so just pray and obey. Be radically obedient to the king. And uh, as you are, I know he will bless you back. But how many know that uh, we're, we, we serve a good God, right? Whoo, some of you weren't convinced on that one. I, like, but I'm just going to chalk it up to, you know, uh, glory stupor. That's what we call it, bro. It's glory stupor. It's when you get so deep into the presence and the oil that you forget your name. You know what I'm saying? And then you're just like, and then they bring you into this. They bring you into like an environment like this, you know, and they're like actually trying to make you do something. And you're like, oh. that's a good place to be. It took me like three months to get over the spirit of rejection and revival with that. Because I get up and be like, hey, and they're like, then I realize, no, nah, this is what it should be. Come on. But anyway, there's envelopes uh, around you somewhere, I don't know, behind your chair uh, or, or in front. Those of you that are watching online, you can give as well. And uh, listen, if there are any, you know, any people that are watching online or, or in the, uh, the house that uh, you know, need a tax receipt for end of the year giving for their business, we can help you with that. And then we'll get some other speakers and all the other stuff. And then next week I'll say we're 100% there. And so uh, anyway, I'm throwing it out there. But uh, pray, obey. Whenever you guys are ready, come on up. And then we're just going to pray. And we're going to launch into what God wants to do. Amen. Amen. Lord, we do. We just ask that your favor would come, God. That, Lord, even as we have been seeing the favor of the Lord come on this building, I pray, God, that it would come on people tonight that are giving, that are sowing, that are partnering, Lord, with what you're doing in this region, in this outpouring, Lord, that are partnering with what you've been doing all over the globe, Lord, with uh, over three million decisions for Christ in the last five years. God, I thank you that, Lord, when we sow in to the treasures of God, which are souls given unto Jesus for his name's sake, I thank 
thank you that treasures from heaven are released. And so, Lord, we do. We declare and we decree and we prophesy over people now supernatural breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I thank you for that hundredfold return. And, Lord, even uh, that you'd release strategies and blueprints and wisdom and ideas, Lord. Open doors, God. We declare it all in the name of Jesus. And everybody said... Amen. Come on, somebody. You know, one time I had this guy come up to me, and he was like, you are like the most passionate offering, offering blesser I've ever met. That's what he told me. And, and he, he said, seriously. And I told him, I said, well, one time uh, at the beginning of the outpouring, I prayed like the quickest prayer ever. And the Lord told me, he goes, he, he goes you may want to put your faith on that. And I said, what? He goes, that's not very, like, that, that didn't have no faith on it for the community. He said, I, I, you play a part in it, too. So now I always ask the Lord, what are you going to release? And then we prophesy back. When I'm up here, I go, what, 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 what do you want to show me? And then he showed me. I saw blueprints coming down. I saw strategies, angels going all around. Like, whoo, it's pretty good. Somebody should grab some of that. Mm. I'm just throwing it out there, but. Uh, you know, we've been having such a good weekend. If you weren't here last night, come on, Tracy Armstrong, he rocked the house. I mean, like, he, he brought the fire, and, and, and it was amazing. Uh, whew, listen, I, I'm, I'm excited. You know, we have uh, our, our, our good friends here, you know, some pastors from Modesto here tonight. They've been here the whole weekend. Uh, you know, uh, Pastor Levi and Nikki uh, from Remnant Church Modesto. Uh, and, and these guys, come on, I want you to come out here. I want to pray for you. Uh, just, just come out here, and I, I want to I release some things over you guys. Uh, these guys, uh, many of you don't know them yet, uh, but I'm telling you, they have one of the most on-fire churches that I've been to in uh, California. And, and you know what I love about God is God moves sometimes in the most unusual ways with the most unusual people that people wouldn't even, like, like if you would have told me Modesto, I mean, like my good friend Sean, uh, you know, Smith, I preached at his conference. He said, you got to go to these guys' spot. I should have already known better because Sean, man, uh, Sean's amazing. And, uh, and, and when I went over there, listen, this is what's beautiful, you guys, is they, they already had the spirit of revival rolling. I mean, me and Evie went up in there and we were like, okay. I mean, uh, listen, the worship was going and blowing. The, the, the power of God was hitting the little kids, man. They were breakdance jumping around like... And, and then they, they got me, though, because, you know, I'm, I'm old school hip hop head. Like sometimes I rap in worship and they, they had a dude up there that was rapping, but he could really rap. It wasn't like me. You know what I mean? I was like this place. But listen, this is what I felt like the Lord showed me. I felt like the Lord showed me uh, that one of the greatest things about what God is doing in revival in this hour is cross pollination. And I'm telling you that you guys have come here and there is a cross-pollination anointing uh, that God wants to release. So we're going to make a deal, all right? Uh, I'm going to pray for you and then you guys are going to pray over us. And, 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 and so, uh, you know, I really believe that, that God wants to release something special. And, uh, and so I'm going to let you go first in, in case, uh, you know, you go down to Omega and we don't get our blessing. But... Uh, <laughs> But you've been in here enough. You guys been here for a few days now. I know you sense the atmosphere. They carry a strong prophetic anointing. And, uh, and, and, and so listen, man, just release what the Lord showed you, and then I'm going to throw down over you guys. Oh. Come on, let's just lift our hands in this place together. Can we do that for a brief moment? The atmosphere is set. I believe with all my heart we are in the glory still. We are right before the throne of Jesus. So right now, Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this hour, Lord. I thank you, God, for what you're doing in this city, Father God, what you're about to do, Lord. Lord, I know even now that there is a river flowing, Lord, from under the threshold, Lord, of your house. Lord, your, your, your throne is set up here in your tabernacle, in your temple, Father God. And I release, Lord, blessing, God. I release even favor, God. Favor upon favor, Lord. Another anointing Lord, upon Pastor Jeremy, God, upon, upon Pastor, uh, 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 upon his wife. Lord, even now, Father God, the gifts, Lord, to continue, Lord, to, to disperse, Lord, upon his people, Lord. I pray for even now, men and women in this congregation, men and women that will rise up and take a stand next to Pastor Jeremy, Lord, and Miranda, Father God, for your calling, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord. I pray for favor, Lord, financial break, Lord, even now, Lord, everything that might be a hindrance. We break through the hindrance in the name of Jesus. Every stronghold broken, every walls coming down, there will be a shout of praise, a shout of victory. 
victory in this city for this hour and what's to come. We release, Lord, gold from heaven, silver from heaven, God. We release, Lord, even now, ministering angels, Father God, warring angels, God, that will go to war on behalf of your children, Lord. Even now, Lord, let the ministry angels come and begin to minister to every life in this place, Lord. We thank you. We glorify you, God. And we know you are faithful to your word. You are not a man that shall lie, Father God. We give you praise for that in Jesus' name. Come on, someone shout the name of Jesus in this place. I just want to pray right now for anybody that is interested in, like, working with the kids, because I know that that's Miranda's heart, too. And I just want to say, like, if that's something that God's putting on your heart right now, just start praying for it and start praying for the wisdom and the knowledge to teach the kids, because you, you guys got it. But it's like sometimes there's no junior Holy Spirit, so you have to teach them like they're, like they're adults. So I just want to pray over anybody that, ha- that feels that right working with the children. Heavenly Father, I come before you right now, Lord Jesus. You see every heart here, God. You see the hearts, God, that have a heart for your children. Father God, I pray right now that you just show them, Father God, the importance, Father God, of discipling the children of this house, Lord, that they're going to be warriors, Father God. They're going to be generations to come, Lord. And I pray over them right now. Give them the blueprints, God, right now, Lord, for the children's ministry, Father God. And just continue to deal with them, God, even right now, God. Help them just to write everything down that you give them, Lord, in their secret place, God. And, Father God, when we come back, I pray that we're going to see just tons of kids up here, Lord, worshiping, Father God, in spirit and in truth with with everybody here in this building, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on. (laughs) So this is what the Lord showed me. He showed me me the, the spirit and the power of Elijah. And what he showed me was the anointing like Elijah had to open and to shut the heavens. And I'm telling you that the Lord says that he's going to send you as rainmakers into different regions and into different places. And I'm telling you that you're always going to be way ahead of the religious spirit. I see the counsel of God. I see the wisdom of God. I see the heavenly dimension. And what I see right now is just like when uh, when the, the heavens were shut and then all of a sudden God sent Elijah and the heavens were opened back up. He went on the top of Mount Carmel. He began to pray, he began to intercede, he began to decree. And after the seventh decree, after the seventh prayer, there was a cloud the size of a man's fifth that came. And he looks over at his servant, the, the servant, and he goes, do you see anything? He says, yeah, there's a, there's a little cloud. And he says, go tell the king to hitch up his chariot and to get down off of this mountain because the rains are, are going to come. And the Bible says the spirit of the Lord came upon the prophet and he outran the chariots of Ahab to Jezreel. And Ahab Ahab represented the religious spirit, represented the hindrance to the move of God. And I'm telling you that the Lord says, not only will you rebuke that spirit, but you will always outrun that spirit to where God is about to move before that spirit can get there and rob the glory of the Lord. And so we release that anointing right now, the anointing of supernatural acceleration. Boom, acceleration, 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 acceleration in Jesus' name right now. Acceleration on the voice, acceleration on the finance, acceleration on the power of God. Lord, we thank you, God, that, Lord, even in this room, it's coming on people that are in the room right now, too. We just release acceleration in glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Woo, come on, I'm telling you right now, some of you are going to run at a pace that you ain't run before. And there's a supernatural release. Even I can feel this in the room right now. Woo! I, I was prophesying to them that they're rainmakers. Listen, God's going to send these guys to regions and cities and places where they ain't got rain. And they're going to call it forth and it's going to come down. And there's going to be a shifting of atmospheres. But that anointing is in this room as well. I'm telling you, God wants to raise up two types of ministries in a way that is going to never be, that hasn't been seen uh, you know, for a long time. And that's the rainmakers and the kingmakers. I'm telling you, the rainmakers and the kingmakers, and I sense that for you guys too. It's the king, the kingly anointing. God's going to make the kings. He's going to raise up the businesses and the entrepreneurs and all these things. And so, uh, Lord, we do. We just release that over them in Jesus' name. 
Lord, over Remnant Church Modesto, God, I thank you. And Lord, we call forth their building in Jesus' mighty name. We call forth a campus in Jesus' name. As soon as I said building, I saw the word campus. I'm telling you, God's going to give you a campus. And so, Lord, we thank you for a campus, Lord, that has school rooms and has everything that's needed for what's coming in this next season. And we do, we just release it now in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give the king a big hand. Woo! Ha, ha. Ha, Stevie, come here, man. I got to pray over you. I mean, you bless us so much, bro. Ha, 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 ha. You know, uh, I'm telling you, I told Stevie last night. He didn't, know that, uh, he didn't know it was about him, though. But I told him last night, I said, bro, you know what happened in the room? And he was like, he was like what? And I was like, I, I told him, I said, you ever seen an underwater well of, uh, where, where they start getting oil, oil out of the bottom of the ocean? And, and they set up like a water rig that, where, where there's like a, 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 an underwater rig of oil. And, and uh, it's the deep waters that, that sometimes the, the purest oil comes from. And I'm telling you, man, th- this is what you are. You're like an underwater well digger. I'm telling you, bro, like you go places and all of a sudden you take people into that deep place, um, even where no man can go. And, and, and I'm telling you, it, it's amazing because it's like God has given you, um, he, he's given you through the Holy Ghost, the ability to, to be able to bring in the deep cries out to deep and, and, and that place of the unseen. You know, if you go to the bottom of the ocean, it's unseen. Many people haven't seen it. It's uncharted. But you know what? They, they'll, they'll hook up, and they'll hit a van of oil down there and they'll build up a rig and it'll be above water they can see it but the source is way down deep and I'm telling you that's what the Lord says your ministry is like and that you are uh, you are someone who God says is going to redig the wells of revival you're going to redig the wells the ancient wells of revival and God says I'm going to send you to revival hot spots I'm going to send you to places where where others have gone and they went in the name of redigging and they didn't do nothing but dig into some food or something but you're going to re- listen you're going to do you're going to redig and you're going to reestablish and you're going to repop wells of revival. And I'm telling you that Jesus says that he says you're my well breaker, son. You're my well breaker. I'm going to use you to bring the swell and I'm going to use you to break the well. Come on somebody. I'm telling you right there, that's what it is. You're going to bring the swell and he's going to cause you to break the well. And so Lord, I thank you God. Boom, there it is right there. Woo. There it is, right there. Woo! Come on, just put your hands out. Some of you, we're going to go into that deep water, well-breaking anointing tonight. Woo! Come on, how many know that when they establish those, they got to put on those, those, those suits, you know, that go down. I'm not talking about a normal diving suit. They got to put on the metal one. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 the heavy duty diving suit. That, and, and, and I'm telling you, it, you know, some people are scared to go down deep because there could be some sharks down there or whatever. How many know that the deep things the devil tries to hide, right? He, he, wants, to, he wants to hide the things of God from the people of God. And, and, and here's the deal. He'll, he'll put encampments or ambushments around the places where the oil's at but God's about to raise up a whole generation that that they're not going to be taken out by the ambushments and and the Lord even gave me a scripture for what I'm talking about, it's Isaiah 45 you know, two through three it says, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight, I'll break into pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron, I will give you the treasuries of darkness and the hidden riches of the secret place that you may know that I, the Lord who call you by your name, am the God of Israel. Come on, just put your hands out and receive that. Woo! <laughs> Come on, he's, Lord, I thank you that we're going deep. Lord, I, I, listen, here's the beautiful thing. You know that, that, that underwater suit that they wear? It's the Holy Ghost. It's being clothed with Christ. Come on. How many know that, uh, you know, when we get clothed with the glory, we have the ability to go into the deep places. Ooh, I just feel like, come on, you know what we've been doing this whole weekend? I mean, listen, they, they, you know what we did? We struck oil tonight. Woo, we've been we've been going and going, and tonight we struck oil. And 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 I'm telling you, if you are recognizing what was happening, you could you could get some healing oil right now. 
You can get some healing oil right now. You might be a, a victim of, of trauma or abuse. Or you might be a victim of, of this thing or that thing. And Miranda was crying out for the, uh, the, the victims. And then all of a sudden, man, the, the, the prophetic anointing, the well broke open. And it was like the justice realm came. It's like I want to, he's looking for some people. He's looking for some people that will just waste everything on him. He'll just waste everything on him. I was, I was, uh, you know, I was at home today and, and I was praying, what, what do you want me to preach tonight? And the Lord, he, you know, he, he's without hesitation. He said, John chapter 12. You know, uh, John chapter 12. And I love John chapter 12 because John chapter 12 is uh, all about worship. Come on, somebody. Come on, this is a worship and miracle weekend. If you've been coming, uh, you know, over the last uh, few nights, it's been glorious. And I, I'm excited because I feel like we hooked the well up into the deep, bro. <laughs> and I, I can't wait for Sammy to get here next week because he's going to get sucked into the well. I know we will. <laughs> he, he's going to, you know what I mean? Like, but here's the deal, man. That, woo, I'm getting so much revelation on this. Uh, bro, your song about the well? Come on. <laughs> you thought it was just a regular well, bro. It's a deep sea diving well. <laughs> woo, come on, just, just put your hands out. We're going to go deep tonight. We can go deep tonight. I, I can feel it. I, I mean, there's so many ways we could, we could chop this thing up, the, you know, uh, chop this steak up tonight. But, but I, I really want to just lean into this word for a minute. And, uh, and, and you guys, I, I love it because how many of you remember, uh, you know, uh, Mary of Bethany, right? I mean, I love the story of Mary of, of Bethany. And, and, and it's so interesting because, you know, the, the Bible, we read some of these stories and sometimes we don't quite understand them, maybe because of culture or we don't put ourselves in the story. See, well, we're going we're gonna to hook up. I'm telling you right now, the underwire, like, whoo, <laughs> there's a pipeline to God's glory tonight. He's going he's to spray you. <laughs> You know when they first crack it, right? It goes, psh, it, it shoots up out the top. You, some of you are going to be like that tonight. Like you're going to leave this place and you're going to give someone a hug. You know what I'm saying? Like you're going to be hanging out with your family. Like, oh, hey, let me give you a psh. They're going to be like, dude, the depression's gone. The fear's gone. I mean, I remember I walked by a lady one time and I just, I walked by her and I just gave her a smile and whoop, metal dissolved out of her body. And I didn't even pray for her. And then we found out later. She's like, when you walk by me, the metal rod is gone out of my leg. I went, wait, what? I said, what? I mean, no, we can carry the presence of God like that. But the way you carry something unusual is you have to be a worshiper. Because worship unlocks things in the realm of the spirit. It's like, you know, if you watch some of these movies, you know, where people, only certain people can go into certain places. You know what I mean? Like, they're like, you got to scan the eyes. And if they don't do that, it's like access denied, right? So you got to understand that your worship is what gets you access into the things, the deep things of God. Come on. It's the word of God, but it's your worship. And, and, and you know what I love about Mary? Uh, listen, Mary, whoo. Ah, see, we, we need to be Marys. But at the same time, it, it, you know, you need to be you. But, but, but I love Mary because Mary's devotion and passion for Jesus so etched an everlasting mark on God's heart that, that he proclaimed that wherever the gospel is preached, her story is going to be told. Come on, who wants to make a memorial in heaven? That God remembers you. And he's like, uh, uh, you know, I mean, this woman so ravished Jesus' heart. See, there's normal worship, and then there's worship that ravishes the king's heart. See, there's, there's sometimes we go through the motions. Come on, somebody, but you ain't getting to the deep oceans like I'm talking about right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to, I'm, I'm on this one tonight. I, I could feel it, man, the deep rig. Uh, deep dive, uh, you know, into the ocean, underwater glory. Woo! But, but I, I want you to see this. It says here, it says, uh, Then six days uh, before the Passover, Jesus came uh, to Bethany where Lazarus, who had been dead, uh, and whom he had raised from the dead, there they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was, uh, was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound. Come on, say a pound. 
took a pound of very costly oil and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of oil. Say filled. And it says, uh, but one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, uh, Simon's son, who would betray Jesus, said, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? And if you keep reading on, Jesus rebukes him. And he says, the poor you have with you always, but not me, right? And, and, and he says, this woman has done this uh, for my resurrection and, and for my burial. He says, this is a week before Jesus is about to be crucified. And, and I want to just say this is, you know, it's interesting because there's worship and then there's worshipers. And, and, and it, what's interesting is if you look this up in, uh, in, in Mark, uh, you know, in his gospel, in, in Mark 14, you know, uh, 3 through 9, it's very interesting because in verse 4, uh, you know, it, it says that there were some that were beside themselves. They were beside themselves. And, and, and it says, uh, you know, why was this fragrant oil wasted? Now, I want to just say something. What's interesting is that the ones who were actually complaining were the disciples of Jesus. Wait a minute. Like, hold up. Wait, like, like, like do you realize this is disrespectful to the king right here? You know what I'm saying? First they're judging Mary, and now they're, they're, they're not seeing Jesus for who he is. Right? I mean, like, could you imagine? But Of course, it was a dude dipping his hand in the honey pot of the Lord, you know? He's trying to get some honey, you know, uh, 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 he's trying to get some honey money on the side, yep. right? And, and I mean, listen, I'll tell you what, don't touch the Lord's finances. And, and, and you know, you know what's crazy is, uh, 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 but, but think about this, Mary comes, and she don't care what nobody thinks, man. She, uh, you know, they're there to honor uh, Jesus, and she runs into the room with a pound, uh, like a pound of costly oil. I don't know what that's like, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, that'd be a lot, right? I mean, I get a little just... St- And it's enough. Like if you put two or three, you know, on, it's going to be like, you know, it'll last for a couple hours. But how many know if you break out a pound of incense and oil, it says the whole house was filled. The whole house was filled. Come on, I want to fill the house of God with my worship. I want to fill, I want to be a fragrant offering unto the Lord that wherever I go, it's, there's, a, there's a, a fragrance to God. I mean, it says in 2 Corinthians um, you know, 2.14, it says, Now thanks be to God who causes us to triumph, but through us diffuses the fragrance of Christ among the lost. Come on, somebody. Do you know that you, uh, come on, how many know some people just stank? You know what I mean? Like, like no, they come in the room, they got a bad attitude. They're like, in the realm of the spirit, you're like, mm, I'm out of here. You, you see them, there's other people, though, they come in the room, you're like, oh, I, I, I want them to pray for me. Because they got, they got a fragrance of the one that they've been with, and it's attractive. It's like people, people are attracted to the anointing of God. You know, but, but when you see somebody that has got a devil, they're like, nah, we out, man. I don't even want that thing to try to talk to me, you know. <laughs> see, see, God wants to come. He wants to remove every hindrance. He wants to remove every stronghold. But he's looking for devotion that is passionate. A devotion that will etch, um, come on, it'll etch a sketch in the spirit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It looks like one thing, but it's drawing a picture over here of another, which means that it's all about Jesus, right? See, some people that go, why was she beside herself and why were they beside themselves? It's interesting. There's two people, uh, you know, mentioned that are beside themselves. One is Judas, the thief, and the other is Mary. And, you know, she's beside herself. Well, I'll tell you why. If you want to understand John chapter 12, you got to go to the beginning of John chapter 11. And you got to read the story because just a little bit before this, her brother was dead. Her brother was dead. And, and, and I think it's interesting if you look at the very beginning of uh, John chapter 11. It, it's, it, it's interesting uh, because it says, Now a, a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, um, in the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with a fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair. Woo, come on, look, there it is. Remember what Jesus said? They got all upset and he said, you shut up. I'm just giving the modern day version. You know, he said, you shut up. You leave her alone. Everywhere the gospels preach, she's going to be talked about. Ooh, made John, made a couple chapters in a row right there. 
Even before they talked about the brother being raised from the dead, they were like, oh, yeah. And by the way, it was the, it was the, the you know, she was the brother of Lazarus, the one who busted out the oil. See, I mean, there was something more than meets the eye to what was happening here. And I'm telling you that, that God is looking for a generation that will waste it all on him. They won't care what the, the, the pharisaical mindset. I mean, I meet some people. I, I've had some people that, you know, I preach at churches all over the world. And I'll go places and sometimes they got the spirit of stiff. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, what does that mean? That'd be like someone's praying for them and they're like. I remember I prayed for, I was in England one time and, and, and I was doing the impartation line. And there was this, this pastor that was there and he didn't like me. Now, I don't know why people are like that. You know what I mean? Like I'd. I, didn't, I was one of the first times I ever went to England. I'm thinking, what did I do with? What did I do to you? You know, and and, and he came and and I remember uh, I, he had told his whole church, uh, ten thousand people. Well, you know what? When when this false prophet prays for me, we're going to expose him. You know, and I, I mean, listen, he was going to expose me. You know, and I, but here's the deal: when you're just living for Jesus, go ahead, expose all you want. You know what I'm saying? Because you ain't going to mess with me. You're going to mess with him. If you're doing what he's saying, and I'll never forget, man, I prayed for the guy. And when I prayed for him, he got knocked into the throne room of heaven. He got knocked into the throne room, but I'll never forget because he braced himself in the line. And I'm going like, are you constipated, bro? Like, why, why are you? He was, he was like bracing like this. And, and you know what it was is he didn't want me to push him down. See, because he didn't been around the real Holy Spirit, and he ain't been around people of worship. He ain't been around people that, that have, have wasted away everything for the Lord, and they carry something that is being talked about, something that's moving, something that's revealing the King. And I'm telling you, when I prayed for him, he flipped over five rows of chairs, and he went right into the throne room, and the Lord told him, stop persecuting my friend. I mean, it was the best testimony I ever heard in my life for me anyway. Because I was like, Jesus told you that I was his friend? I didn't care about nothing else. I was like, Jesus told you that I was his friend? And he's like crying. And I'm like, that's great for you, dude. Good throat room encounter. I'm going to go cry too. And I was like. <laughs> that was all I, I cared about. I mean, that was the best service for me ever, dude. I'm like, Jesus told the religious guy. He was going to make me a false prophet to all the people in his whole network, you know, that I was his friend. I was like, come on. I mean, listen, that, how many of you know that that's what we want? We want to be friends of God. I mean, people, man, you know, it's like God's glory shows up. When God's glory shows up, you see what's going on in the room. People get fidgety. <laughs> you know, even a service like tonight, man, we went 45 minutes over what we normally do, but I love it. Because we have made a pact with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Not with people. You know, but, but we said, God, we're going to let you do what you want to do. Whatever it looks like, you know. And, and it's funny because we get little inklings of what he's going to do. I told Miranda, there's going to be miracles tonight. You know, it's going to happen, I think, maybe in the transition, you know. And, and, and there it was, right? See, when, when you lean into God and you, you're willing to pay the price. Come on, somebody. Do you know that, that historians believe that that pound of, uh, you know, th that pound of, of the spikenard oil which she busted open over Jesus' feet was something that was so costly that it would be like a year's wage in their culture? Could you imagine? I don't know what the average wage is in America, but it could be probably, I don't know, $30,000, 30, $40,000, something like that. Could you imagine? Uh, she breaks that open, and now all of the disciples are being challenged by her because they're like, what are they doing? Like, we could have used that for the ministry. And they're, going, they're, they're looking at this worship, but it's unusual to them because they don't have it. They follow Jesus. They catch for Jesus, I, may, I would assume. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe, they just, maybe the angel caught for him. But, I mean, if people are falling down for us, could you imagine if the king was praying? I mean, like, like they, they, they would eat with Jesus. They would sup with Jesus. You know, and, 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 and yet some of them just maybe thought he was the prophet. You know, some of them, how, how do I know that they didn't fully believe? Because when the shepherd was struck, only John was at the crucifixion. The rest of them ran. But see, John had an unusual worship, just like Mary had an unusual worship. 
See, John was the guy that he put his head on Jesus' chest. He was listening to the heartbeat of God. I mean, listen, and when everything went crazy, right, and the dude that stole out of the honey pot, <laughs> right, the, the dude that wanted the money for the oil, when, when you know, Jesus said, when are you going to betray me? They all looked to John. Hey, who's it? Ask him. We all know you got that favor, John. Like, lean in, buddy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I want to be that guy. I want to be that guy. There's different levels to this thing of knowing God. I mean, how I many know that there was the 12 disciples, there was the 70 that were anointed and sent out, and the 70 saw some amazing stuff, demons cast out and miracles happening. And when they came back, they told Jesus, they're like, they're like, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he was like, oh, that's cool, you know, but like, just rejoice. How I many know it was about worship? He said, that's cool, you guys. Yeah, you know, the demons are subject to you, but, but just rejoice because your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. See, so what does this look like to be a worshiper in spirit and in truth? Number one, it starts with thankfulness. It starts with being thankful. I'm telling you, so often the reason why the devil can rob people is because people aren't thankful. They're, you know what I'm saying? And every little thing that happens, they get more irritated about what they don't have than what they have been given. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm saying? I might not have everything that I want, but I got eternal life. I, I, I might not have everything that everybody else has, but God healed me. You know what I'm saying? I might not have what everybody else has, but all the demons that were in me, they fled the day that I asked Jesus in my life. You know, Jesus wants us to begin to recognize that if, if we want to go, come on, we're going to get the rig out tonight. It, it's already installed. It is. It's all right. You know, but we're about to build it. You know what I found out? I looked it up real quick. They build little cities on these rigs. Because it takes a whole bunch of workers to work out there in the middle of the deep of the ocean with the oil rigs. And guess what God's about to do? He's about to raise up some deep sea oil rig people up at this place. Woo! And when people, listen, people aren't going to see the oil. It's not going to be like, I bust out my little oil. You know what I mean? They're going to feel the oil. They're going to feel the oil when you show up. It's like, you know, it's like Charles Finney. I read about, he was preaching in this library. And, and the, 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 the guy that, you know, was responsible for, uh, you know, basically just terrorizing his city came in and he had a gun. And the devil told him, you need to shoot, you know, Charles Finney. And he came and he had the gun ready. He had it, he had it you know, uh, ready to go. And he sat down on the front row. And as soon as Charles Finney opened the, the Bible, this, the guy says, an otherworldly spirit came into the room and pinned him to the floor and, and, and the guy's gun rolled out on the ground and they're like what is that and Charles Finney knew by word of knowledge what he was going to do I mean listen who wants that anointing and then they said the most wicked man in our city got saved last night because he went to go kill the man of God didn't work because someone had some deep sea oil <sighs> Whew, the oceans of God's love the oceans of God's glory, so much so that he went to go preach at his friend's uh, factory. Nah, he just went to go hang out. You know, uh, seriously, uh, like, can I show you my factory? Okay, cool. They open the door and everybody, what do we do to get saved? They're rolling around on the ground. And we read those stories and we're like, that's amazing. And I'm going, how do we get the oil? How do we get that oil, God? And he's like, Mary, be a Mary. Just give it all. The costly, give it all. I mean, you've got to understand. But why did she do it? Because her brother was dead. And now he's eating at the table. <laughs> he's eating at the table with Jesus. He's alive. And all of a sudden, she comes out the, out the, uh, the, the whatever, the, the hallway. And she's like, ah. <laughs> you know, and everybody's like, what is going on? And Jesus is like, this is going to be written about for all of history. <sighs> oh. See, some of you, you don't even know what that looks like. You don't know. It could be the Lord told you to, uh, to bring uh, or, or to go on a missions trip when you got uh, like, what, a three-month-year-old child. Remember? Uh, I mean, listen, we... we uh, yeah, Valerie, uh, she came on a trip, and I remember everybody was like, wait, you got a three-month child. What are you going to do with the child? She's like, I'm going to leave with my husband. You know? And he was like the champion. He's like, I'll do it, baby. God said, you go. And she went, man. I remember seeing her, and she was like, I was like, so what did you see? And she's just telling me creative miracle after all this stuff. And I mean, like, most people in the natural would be freaked out. 
And you know what? She did that. And then when they got back, you know, I, I'd check in. Like, how's, how's the baby doing? Oh, fine. <laughs> See, but most people wouldn't trust the Lord like that. But I can guarantee you that was a mile marker in her life of worship before the Lord. Now, I'm not saying that you should go do that. <laughs> I think she had a, well, she did have an encounter with the Lord. But what I'm saying is that the, the Bible is full of all kinds of unusual people that do unusual things. And I mean, most of the world looks at it and they're like, you crazy. I'm serious. And, and, and you know what I love about that is it might be crazy on earth, but in heaven, come on, somebody. In heaven, it's pure uh, worship. And when you worship the Lord in whatever it is he tells you to do. I mean, I, I've seen uh, all kinds of stuff, you know, where God told me to do foolish things. I'm like, God, really? You going to make me do that? <sighs> Remember Miranda, you know, God told her to go to the witchcraft store and just pour some oil out and do a little worship dance in front of it. And it, there, she didn't even bind the devils. And it, you know what I mean? Like the Lord's like, just go throw a party that they're going to end. You know, and Jesus like goes, and pours the oil and then, like throws the party, you know, speaking in tongues, worshiping God, and then drives by a couple you know, weeks later and it's gone. Dry it up from the roof. <laughs> See, when you go and you worship, listen, the devils can't keep their strongholds. They can't keep their strongholds. So what would happen if instead of you being like, you know, going to your friends and being like, man, pray for me, man. My daughter's, my, my daughter's, uh, you know, uh, drinking all the time and all this stuff. And, man, she's so stupid. And, you know what, man, just like her grandmother, you know. And just, uh, how many old people curse people more than understanding the power of what they're saying? What if you went and we're like, let's throw a party tonight and praise God that she's going to get delivered this month. And we're going to praise God every morning for it. And we're going to see what happens. We're going to make some decrees after we praise. Because when we praise, the glory starts to come. The atmosphere of heaven, the presence of God starts to come. And just like when God created the heavens and the earth, this, the Bible says the Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the earth. And what did he do? The Lord, uh, he spoke into himself. I mean, that's what happened. But he said, let there be light, right? And light happened has never stopped ever since. See, that's how creative words are released. See, we need to learn how to frame the atmosphere of, of the presence of God around us. Right? The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, uh, you know, uh, chapter 11, it, it says that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Right? And the, and the, the things that are seen were called forth into existence because of the things that are not seen. So what does that mean? That means that if I can get into a place of breaking the alabaster box over Jesus in my life continually, and it, which really I think is just radical obedience, but it's also thankfulness. I mean, we don't know what was going on in Mary's heart, but I, I don't even know that it was an obedience thing. I think she was just super, super, super happy. Her brother was alive, and, and she was like, what do I have that I could give to the king? That is, I, I just want to give him my best thing because he, he saved my brother. And she just goes, and goes I have that. Well, yes, you know, and runs out there. And, and she didn't even know, but she was doing the very prophetic acts of God that had been prophesied and foretold from times before by the holy prophets of God. Not only that, she was, she was a participant in the story. Come on, somebody. If you want to know what I want, I want to be a participant in his story on the earth. I want to be someone that, that I can say, you know, in the time frame of history, in the, the moments that God allowed me to be alive on the earth, he was very intentional. I want to be in the center of his story. It's not about my ministry. It's not about having a big audience. It's not about people looking at me as if I'm someone. It's about the king being glorified. And I'm in the middle of the greatest story that's being written about him in history. And you know what? Your part might not look as significant as being Peter following him. You know what I mean? Or John or or it might not, you, you might not be called to a pulpit ministry or to go preach to 700,000 people in Pakistan, but you might actually be uh, someone that, that, that is called uh, to fund the kingdom. You might be somebody that's called to raise children. You might be somebody that's called to do something different. And everybody's thinking that all the guys at the table are the important ones. And here comes Mary. Whoo! Ah. So when we get to heaven and the ones we think are the important ones aren't even going to be in the conversation. You know what I'm saying? 
<sighs> We're going to be shocked when we get to heaven. You know, it's like, you ever thought about, God asked me a question one time. He goes, he goes who took the place of Judas? And I went, Paul. And he goes, wrong. And I went, what? He goes, in the book of Acts, it says they cast lots. It was Matthias. And it's interesting because it says that the requirement for whoever was going to replace Judas was that, uh, was that they had been with Jesus from the very beginning of the baptism of John all the way to the resurrection and that they were faithful in all things. And, and that's all it said. It was between Matthias and Justice. Uh, that would be a cool name. Your name is Justice. You know what I'm saying? And in our prophetic day, we'd be like, yeah, it's Justice, man. I feel it. But God said Matthias. And you know what's amazing is this, is that the Bible says there are 12 memorial stones in heaven. Each of them, there is a name written for the 12 apostles. And there is right now, I saw it in the Spirit. The Lord showed me. There is a stone with Mattathias' name on it because God wants everybody to know that what builds the memorials of heaven isn't always what's seen. It's not always what everybody thinks the flash is all about. or what, It's all about faithfulness. And sometimes it's just about being in the right place at the right time. And if you're a worshiper, you'll be there. I mean, could you imagine? I'm sure, I'm sure you know, Mattathias was like, you know, if we're, if we're playing football. You know what I mean, he was like, you are the sixth string safety. You know what I mean? He's like, he, he, he ain't even got a helmet. You know what I mean, he's just, he's walking around happy to take some pictures with the stars. Like, yo, Peter, come over here. You know what I mean? Like, huh. and then one day the Lord's like, you know what, man? I saw you running in the 40s. You know, the, I saw you, you were doing the push-ups when, man, look, look at these boys. James didn't even work out, you know? And all of a sudden, he's like, let me just touch you. And the guy's like, Whoa. you know what I mean? Like, he's on the starting team. You know what I mean? He only played three minutes of the game, but he got a ring. Come on, somebody. I mean, listen, this is the story. This is the story of the Gospels. And we think that everybody, you know, I'm telling you right now that, that we read about history. Charles Finney. I was talking about Charles Finney. I love Charles Finney. I mean, he carried such a glory of God. I mean, in, I remember I went to Boston, man, and I just wanted to stand on uh, the, the shores, and I was out there just on, you know, on the harbor, and I was going, Lord, I received the anointing uh, that was released when Charles Finney came to the city because he preached in a church nine blocks down, and when he was preaching, the glory of God had such a radius, it went two miles out into the ocean. And what had happened was ships would come in with goods and they would hit the two mile radius and something strange would start to happen. The men would start to get convicted of sin and they didn't know why. And by the time it got a mile in and it got a half mile in, the, uh, they found many ships, the crews were, were on their faces crying out, what must we do to get saved? They didn't know what to do. So they would throw a lifeboat over. They would send one guy. And, you know, I, I thought about that. I'm like, man, that guy must have been so wicked. <laughs> He was the worst. They're like, you, it ain't affecting you. Get out. You know? Like, and they would send him to the shore. And they would go to the shore. And they go, we need, a, we need help. And they're like, what happened? Pirates? They're like, no. We don't know how to explain it. Where's a preacher? This is what history says about Boston in the days of Charles Finney. And, and, and you know what they ended up doing? Is they ended up getting a preacher. He went out there. And when he got out there, it was the easiest gospel mission ever. Because once he jumped to the boat, they went, what are we doing? I got saved. All of them. Deep sea rig oil. Deep Christ out to deep. You know, in the scriptures, that's talking about the, the water spout, you know, the, the waterfalls. But, but I'm telling you, there's deep places that God wants to take us to. And there's always another place that we haven't been before. And it's like the scripture says, you know, how many know we were once bound? Right? But Jesus broke into pieces. He broke into pieces those, those, uh, those iron bars. And, and because of his sacrifice and his blood and because of what he did at the cross and the resurrection of God, he gives us access to the secret places. Woo, come on, somebody. He gives us access um, uh, to the, the hidden riches in darkness. Because, huh. you know, you can look at things one of two ways. You know what I mean? Like, I meet people all the time. 
that have a poverty spirit and they think that it's evil to be blessed. You know, like, like I, I, I met one guy one time. There's this business guy that I knew in Indonesia. He's probably the most like generous guy I know. And, and he gives millions and millions and millions of dollars into his own nation to totally take care of all kinds of people. And this one guy came to me. He goes, you know, what's wrong with that guy? And I said, what? And he's like, he's got a Maserati. He's got a Ferrari. And he's got this. And I looked at him and I said, what? Uh, and, and I go, well, what's wrong with that for him? And, and, and he goes, well, it's just it's greedy. And I said, dude, you do know that he gave $100 um, million dollars, you know, to your country and to the poor. And he was like, well, what? And I was like, I was like, bro, stop judging people. See, but see, those are the treasures of darkness. For some people, it's a no-no. Like, don't, I can't even do that. But for another, the Lord's like, no, you don't understand. I need this guy to be an influencer. He needs to meet with, uh, he needs to meet with all the other influencers that nobody else can get to. So I give him this stuff as kind of like a, um, it's a language to the presidents and the kings and all these different ones. Most people probably never touch that. But I'm, I'm not on the other side going, you ain't made it, man, unless you got a Lamborghini. Man, who cares? I've been driving the same Jeep Grand Cherokee the whole time. Like, I've been in revival for years. And you know what? Like, yeah, I'm happy with that car. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I mean, I mean, some people, they get so materialistic. But at the same time, let's not, if God wants to bless you, come on. Come on, what's wrong with it? Right? And, and, but you got to understand something. When we get our eyes off of what it's truly about, stop looking at people's stuff and worship the God that, that, that blesses. And I mean, You know, the blessings come upon the righteous and the unjust. The rain falls upon the righteous and unjust alike. And, and I mean, listen, God is about to raise up a generation. Hmm. Hmm. You know what he's going to do? He's going to use your million dollar alabaster box to break open stadiums when, <laughs> when stuff is happening. He's going to use some people to, I, I'm prophesying right now. Some people are like, just that prosperity. No, this is called a kingdom wealth with a purpose. Come on. But, but at the same time, listen, if you ain't got that, that don't even matter anyway. Like, we, we, we put levels to this thing. You know how I know a gospel is the true gospel? If it can't work in developing world nations where we go, it's not the real gospel. It's not. I meet people all the time that have nothing, and they're happier than everybody I know. Because they got the Holy Ghost. Come on. And they got, but, but I also meet people from that environment that became a billionaire. And I'm like, whoa, how'd you do that? And like, I got with God, and I broke the alabaster box. And he gave me a strategy and a wisdom. See, I, I'm prophesying to some of you today. I'm prophesying to some of you today. Some of you watching online. And, and, and it's not about the stuff. It's about the king. And, but if you give the king the, the glory and the worship, then he can trust you. Uh, yeah. See, but, but here's the thing. Deep. Cries out to deep. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going to be stuck on this one. The oil rig. <laughs> They got, I was, I was looking it up, man. They got entire communities. They got cooks up there. They got, it, it, listen, they got all kinds. It's like a little city. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, could you, man, I, I think that's what revival is. You know, a lot of people don't see it. You know what I mean? Like, it's like it's hidden from a lot of people because they, they, they don't see through the cloud. Come on, how many know, how many know that if you go to the beach, sometimes there's the cloud. You can't see out there. It's out there, but people got to go through the cloud to get there. Oh. <laughs> And then when they get there, come on, bro. <laughs> when they get there, they're like, what is this? And like, this is the deep oil. <laughs> like, get off the boat, get on the shore, have an open vision of the throne room. They're like, whoa, what is that? You know what I mean? That's called you came into the atmosphere of heaven. <laughs> you know, they're like, wow, I was used to the shores back there, of mixtures, you know? Like, <laughs> come on, some places are so mixed. I, I, I remember one time I preached. This is funny. I preached at a university. I got invited. I'm almost done here. I got invited to a university and they accidentally invited me. It wasn't a Christian university. It was a secular university. And what had happened was that this lady went on a crusade that I went on. And I, you know, at that time I was just serving a ministry that did big crusades. And, and, but I preached the pastor's meetings. And this lady was, um, uh, you know, she was like the vice president, uh, you know, uh, of the school. And she told me, she goes, I want you to come and do a crusade at my school. And I was like, okay, let's do it, you know. And so she convinced the, the, the Jesus group on the campus. Um, uh, she said, oh, yeah, you got to host this guy. He's a, he's a wonderful Bible teacher. That's what she said. Didn't say nothing about the Holy Ghost. Didn't say nothing about miracles or power. She goes, he's an expert in the word. And I was like, saved for a year and a half. 
I show up. And they go, listen, we're going to show you how our meetings are done. I go, okay. I'm sitting on the front row. First night. I'm eating spaghetti and hot dogs right there. And, and the guy gets up and he goes, he has, there's a guy here and a guy here. They're both in chairs. And the guy looks at the other guy and he goes, today we're going to discuss whether, it's, uh, wh- whether we should open our eyes in prayer or close our eyes. Or whether we should raise our hands or not raise our hands. And I was like, how many know in my revivalist spirit, I was like, whoop, 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 we're in trouble. Like, I was like, I'm going, what the heck? Like, I, I'm telling you, that's me and my submarine wanting to go deep. I'm like, whoop, trying to reemerge, whoop. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, go deeper. And I'm like, you guys are at the most shallow level. And they were arguing, we should not raise our hands. And I, was, I had one hand up eating spaghetti on purpose. They were looking at me, and I was like, <laughs> they were looking at me like, yes, do you have a question? I said, oh, wait till you hear the teaching tomorrow. I mean, like, <laughs> now how do you teach to that group? I had a friend with me. I said, you're the teacher. You go first. And he preached, and they looked at him like he was at a, you know, they looked at him like a cow at a new gate. Like, what? So then I go, what am I going to do, Lord? And he goes, you're going to move in power tonight. And, and he, goes, he goes, the only thing that's going to bypass this religion is to release power. And so I got up there, and I just I stood up, and I go, God's going to do miracles tonight. And normally people are excited, and they just. Oh, and by the way, worship was like this. And I brought two kind of intercessor type people with me, and they were doing like crazy stuff. Like, like, like they were, they were fully like doing prophetic acts and nobody had a grid. Like, like they were like, one of them was like, you start from that end and I'll start from that end and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll light the match. And everybody's watching them. We're like, what are those people doing? And they're like, they're like lighting a match while I'm trying to preach to a crowd that doesn't want to hear what I got to say. And I'm thinking like, oh Lord, help me. And, 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 and then like security's looking at them. I'm, I'm like, don't worry, they're my friends. They're like, really? Those are your friends? Like, and, and the Lord goes, Release the power. And I go, I go, I go, okay, God, I'll release the power. And it, and it was so funny because I go, I go, um, who needs a miracle? And this girl stands, she gets up and stands. I go, oh, she's full of hunger. I just laid hands on her. I didn't know what was wrong with her. I forgot to ask. And, and then she falls out. And they're, they're, now they're looking at me like, <gasps> and she's got a smile while she's down. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, she's a closet drinker. And she's down there, and, and, and then they're like really getting fidgety now. Like the guy that was talking about closing your eyes or opening your eyes, he was closing his eyes like, I don't really want to see this. Like, we're, 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 we're talking like, you know, on the shores of <laughs> barely maybe it touched the big toe. And, I, and I'm like, whoop, whoop. We're like, we're going to bring, we, we're going to drill the, <laughs> the rig. And, and, and then I, I, I go, so I get the girl up, and I'm thinking, like, I wonder what God healed her of. So I go, hey, what did God heal you of? And she goes, and I'm like, are you okay? And she's like, this is amazing. She goes, I can feel my face. And I'm like, that's cool. What happened? And she goes, now everybody in the school knew her because she got in a, in a car accident in Oklahoma. Her little car got crushed in between two semis and flipped like nine times. And she broke all the bones in her face. And they did reconstructive surgery and put seven metal plates with pins in her face. And, and it was holding everything together. And she said, I've not felt my face since that time because all the nerves were destroyed. She goes, right now I can feel myself slapping myself. And, and the whole room stopped started screaming because in that Jesus uh, group that uh, she was in that same group her freshman year and they were all crying and wailing and and and, and they, they thought she was gonna die and then now God recreates her face and I'm telling you I gave the altar call and all of them ran up and started worshiping God except the one guy still had his eyes closed and he was over there and I asked him later, I said, man, what happened? He goes, man, I, 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 I like what you had to say, but I just couldn't look at you when you were doing it. <laughs> I was like, okay, bro. <laughs> you know. And then the next night, the, all, all these other people came. And, and, and then the guy comes up to me and goes, this is amazing. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, we've tried everything to get the football team to come. They're all here. And I was like, really? And, and, and he goes, yeah, we're evangelistic now. And I was like... And, and, and so, so then that night, you know, and, and by the way, if you want to know why this pertains to what I'm talking about, because 
my friend preached the night before, and they, like, didn't receive anything. And then now I'm up. And I'm thinking, what are we going to do? And I go in, like, we're staying at the vice president's house. And I, I'm, you know, there. And I don't know what to do because I'm like, oh, I'm up tonight. And I saw how bad last night went. And so I just got on my face and just started worshiping God. I mean, like, I, I, I worshiped for 10 hours before that meeting. And I was breaking the alabaster box over. Um, I, I mean, I was doing things that were like I would never do. I mean, uh, the, I said, Lord, uh, God, what do you want me to do? He's like, dance like David. I was dancing like David. I mean, um, and, and you know what was crazy is uh, it was the very first time I had an angelic visitation that scared me. I remember I was reading the word and it was like my mind was wandering. I was praying in the spirit. I was worried I was going to lose my voice. I was like, I was trying everything I knew how to do to worship God and to connect with him. And it wasn't working. The Lord goes, dance. And I was like, and at that time, I was definitely not a dancer. I was like, what do you mean dance? Like, 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 Lord, like, like slow dance or like break dance. You know, it's like, you know. I'm like, I'm like, what do you want me to do? And, and he's like, just give it everything. And I was jumping up and down and just going, spinning in circles. And, and all of a sudden I turned. And when I turned, um, this, this angel went shoom, right there in my face. And I mean, listen, I know why the Old Testament, the, the angels show up. They go, fear not. I mean, I, I freaked out. Ah, and I fell on the ground. And, and I looked at this angel and I looked down and there was a feather about this big. If you want to see it, go on the Sid Ross show I did on angels. We actually have it on, on the show. I show it, and it swirls like this. And, it, uh, and it's like it's otherworldly looking. And you know what ended up happening is I got hit, and I, I, was, I was like, what is this? And, and the Lord said to me, it's a, uh, there's a breakthrough. It's a breakthrough revival angel. You know, a, a warrior angel that's going to push back the darkness of religion. And, and, and when you go to the meeting tonight, breakthrough's going to happen. Now, how many know that I came out of that encounter and I was pretty encouraged? I was like, I think God's going to show up tonight. My friend who didn't have a good night, he's like, really, you think, dude? And I was like, I showed him the feather. He's like, that's not fair. He slammed his door. And he goes in and I hear him going, God, if you visit him, you'll visit me. And then he comes out and he's all like, and I'm like, you saw something, didn't you? And he's like, yeah, bro, I got caught up into the heavens. And you know what I learned that day? I learned that you can, get, you, can, you can have an orphan spirit that gets mad that someone else gets something from God. Or you can let it be a holy jealousy that stirs you to hunger. And you know what that guy did? He taught me a lesson that, God, I'm your son too. He claimed it. If you did it with him, why won't you do it with me? That's a position of worship. Come on, that's, that's a position of hunger. You know, some people, here's their worship. Like, like we're, we're talking about worship. Like, some people just get into it and they put their hands up. That's, uh, you know, they're into it. And other people, they're like, man, I don't like this hand stuff, you know. Seriously. I, I, I was started off in a, okay. <laughs> I was in a conservative church when I first got saved, and I drove everybody crazy. I did. And, but I was a little bit, I had a little bit of what I call misplaced passion going on, too. Which means I was saved for month and I read some Bible stories and I thought I like was an expert and I remember I remember I read the story of of Moses and when he had to have his hands up and he had to have the two guys help him well I went to church and I thought that if I could hold my hands up the whole service God would deliver everybody <laughs> and so I'm in church and we're going it's like back in the the Chris Tomlin days when 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 he was writing all the songs for the church at that time and and I was like you know I was like and I lift up holy hands and imitate I'm going help me God and they're shaking like this and everybody around me I could hear them laughing and I'm like Lord I love you deliverance and I'm like send an angel you know and these people were so loving and graceful like, no, they were. Like, like the pastor was like, the pastor came to me. He's like, brother, I love your passion, man. It's like, how are your shoulders? <laughs> it's like, how are your shoulders? Uh, like, and I, I was so crazy. I, I, listen, misplaced passion worship. I went, I was sitting at the bus stop with a, remember the CD players back in the day? They have the shock resistant. You got to hold them just right. And, and you got those, those wire headphones with a little, and if you lose the fuzzy part, it hurts your ear, but you're still listening. You're like, ah, it's cutting my earlobe, but it don't matter. You know, so I'm saved for like three weeks and I'm at the bus stop. And the bus stop, it's like, if I miss this bus, I got to walk three miles home. And I'm at the bus stop and, and there's like seven people. And I go, Lord, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it's the power on the salvation. I don't care what none of them think. I'm going to worship you right now. And they're hearing me say this. And I get down on my knees and, and I'm starting saying, Lord, I lifted him on high. 
Lord, I said, I love to sing your praises. And I, hear, I feel the wind. It goes by and I go, the angels are here. Lord, I worship you. And I opened my eyes and it was the bus. I missed it. It went by. I walked home for three miles going, you are worthy of me walking, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, God. I don't care what nobody says. I got my wow number 23 CD. You know what I'm saying? Like, But you know what, though? God took a dude like that that didn't care what nobody thought. You know what I'm saying? And he thrust me into a university full of people just like me. Misplaced passion. Some people got a misplaced passion because they resist the oil rig at all costs. And they actually think they're doing the Lord a favor like Saul. And then a light beam comes out. And they're like, you will now be an oil rig diver for the rest of your life. <laughs> Establishing <laughs> Antioch's and <laughs> the Colossians were blessed. I mean, like, listen, this is, I know it's a little different, but I'm, I'm, I want you to get this. You can be so misled in thinking that what you're doing is worship and not understand it's not about you. For the first year of me being a Christian man, I, I worshipped because I loved God when I was by myself. But I was worshipping to be seen by man and didn't know it. Because I was an athlete and a baseball player and I only knew how to perform. And so God had to break me of performance. And he used my little brother who had been saved for like a week to do it. He wanted to go to a conference with someone unsafe. <laughs> and I thought, I, I told him, I was like, I have to accompany you and mom to make sure that you don't get deceived. And we went. <laughs> we went and it was a big old conference, all these major speakers there. And then this guy gets up. He's a healing revival. So he lays hands on a guy. And the guy goes down. And he's like shaking to the power. And I go, ah, he's put him into trances. Don't go up there. <laughs> this is me. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and my brother who's saved for like two weeks, rebukes me. And he goes, man, you made me read the book of John for like the last, you know, uh, two weeks nonstop in the, in the Gospels. And he goes, that dude down there that you don't like is more like Jesus than anybody else I've ever heard of. He said, they showed the video. He's feeding the poor. He's casting out demons. And the power of God is overwhelming people just like in the book of, you know, in the books. And I was like, you're right. And I got delivered of a religious devil. I was like, you're right. And then the next thing you know, they're like, uh, if you want to go to India, stand up. And I don't know how it happened, but I was down at the altar. I'm like, what? how did I get here? And my mom was like, oh, my son wants to be a missionary. And I was like. <laughs> and then my dad, uh, like, I thought for sure, oh, I'm good, man. I ain't got $3,000. Ain't no way I'm going. And then I told my dad, I was like, yeah, I don't know why I stood up. He's like, well, I'll give you the money. I said, no. <laughs> and then I got wrecked after that. And then it was like, <laughs> I was probably too undignified after that. But we won't go into that part. So here I am on the campus. And, and you know what ended up happening? The captain of the football team tore his ACL that year. And the team was devastated because he was an All-American. And it was like in their conference, they had already lost two games. That's how bad it was. They all came because they heard about the face that got recreated. And they thought maybe God could heal our star. And when he came, we prayed for him, and God healed his knee. And he ran around. He ran around the room. And I'm telling you, when, when someone unsaved from a football team gets healed, he was running around. I mean, like, dude, they had a, they had a rugby scrum at the altar because they were so excited. All the teammates came up and jumped on him. And, and of course, me being who I was, I was like, y'all, listen, God did a miracle for him, but all y'all need to repent, you know. Man, can a team be saved in a day? Come on, somebody. But you know what? The breakthrough came because I broke open the alabaster box in desperation in that room. And I was crying out to God. And, and I wasn't crying out to God because it was about me. I was crying out to God because I saw the state of the hearts of these people. That they're, It's just like Jesus talked about. He says, you worship me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. See, God's about to raise up some worshipers. Worshippers that got busy lips because they're kissing the sun. 
Come on, the Bible says, kiss me with the kisses of your mouth. Oh, busy lips. That's an old saved by the, the bell phrase. <laughs> you remember that? Zach Morris, he's like, he's like rebuking Slater. He's like, you have busy lips because he kissed his girlfriend. <laughs> come on, we know we need to get some busy lips with Jesus, right? So, some of y'all need to come out of the gutter. I meant worshiping, you know, let the lips. <laughs> come on up, man. I, 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 could, I could keep going, but. But I, I, I feel like the, I feel like the oil's coming. The oil's coming. Listen, I, I, I want you just to put your hands out. Now, one thing that I want to say about Mary. This is the most beautiful thing. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for a few of you. Listen, God wants to teach us the power of worship. When it comes to worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Do you want to know why you all are sitting in your seats today, born again and saved? And who's responsible for it? Yeah, we know Jesus. But you want to know who's responsible for it? A Gentile named Cornelius. If you read the book of Acts, it says that Peter was on top of Simon the Tanner's house. And he was fasting and he was praying because there had been such an onslaught and an attack against the church in Jerusalem. And he's on the roof praying and he's fasting. What's the next move, God? There's this man who's in the opposite of the Jewish quarters. He's in the pagan side. His name's Cornelius. Centurion, soldier, he's worshiping, he's, he's a captain, he's over there. And he's crying out to God all the time. And the Bible says that he was a devout man. And he served God with his alms, which were his giving to the poor, and his worship, his prayer. And as a result, he had a visitation of God. And the Lord said, I want you to send your men to Simon the Tanner's house. Here's the address. Come on, I mean, that's a pretty good verse. Visitation of the Lord, right? And, 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 and here's what I want to say to you. When you're a worshiper, when you are devoted to God, when you are supporting what he is doing, and I, I, in all the all areas, you, you're breaking an alabaster over his feet with your lifestyle. He will give you favor to receive things that nobody else could. Listen, you know how many churches want to invite people like T.D. Jakes or people like Bill Johnson or whoever? We could just start naming all these ministries. That, like, like, you can't just send someone like that an invitation and be like, they're going to say yes. You know, it's like they got like 10,000 invitations a day. But If God gives you favor, he can get you anyone. And you know what releases favor? Worship, praise, intimacy, devotion, going after God, breaking up in the alabaster box. Because you start to be the recipient of things that nobody else gets. And you know what happens is God speaks to the premier apostle of the day. And he he, he tells him with a vision, kill and eat. He's like, not so, Lord. I've never eaten anything unclean. And the Lord is like, no, no, you don't understand. Don't call what I've created unclean. And he sees it again. And he sees it again. And you know what God's telling him? The gospel's bigger than you, buddy. Yep. You're the chosen ones that the gospel's going to come through. The whole world's going to be blessed by you. But I also have another sheepfold. John chapter 10. He's the door to the sheep. There is no other way to the Father except through Him. But then He he says, I laid down my life for the sheep. And then if you read John 10, it's amazing. It says, He says, but I must. I must go. Because there's another sheepfold, and that's the Gentiles. You know why the Gentiles 
us came into the kingdom is because someone broke open an alabaster box that got the attention of heaven. Because if you read about Cornelius, it says his prayers and his alms came before the Lord as a memorial. Woo! What are memorials? They're something that is to honor something great that's happened. Do you know that there are things that we can do for Jesus that are like a memorial that, that make history. It's like, I, I feel like there's a whole room of Corneliuses in this place. I feel like there's Corneliuses online. I feel like there's Marys in this place. And every time you say yes to him, it's like you're, you're cracking open costly oil. Every time you, you, you trip and you stumble and you, you get back up and you recognize, I'm forgiven, man. I'm not going to stay in that place. And you keep going. It's like costly oil. Huh? Yeah. See, some of you need to hear that. You might, have, you might have been running and all of a sudden you went, you fell down. You're like, oh, I did it. I haven't done that for eight months. I can't believe I did that. Well, it's your choice. You're going to lay down there and cry, or you're just going to get back up and go, all right. You know, get your pumps on, <laughs> pump them back up. Keep going. See, because I, I feel like tonight God's saying, get off the ground and keep going. Get up off the ground and stop focusing on you and start to worship God. Because even in the midst of you not being complete, which, by the way, you're not going to be complete. You know what I'm saying? There's no perfect church because the minute you walk in the door, it's no longer perfect. <laughs> but that's actually a revelation of grace that we need to get that it's not by our own merit or our own doing or our own works. It's the free gift of God. Now, that doesn't mean that we can be greasy, gracie, and do whatever we want. Come on, we need to fear the Lord. But what I'm saying, though, is if there's a generation that can change the planet right now, we are here. Why not you? Why not now? Why not us? Why not this time for another move of God that would sweep the whole earth? All he's looking for is some alabaster box people. All he's looking for is some Holy Ghost tongue-talking, chainsaw tongue-talking people. Come on. So, I mean, listen. <laughs> See, but that's where, remember I was saying, some people are cool. Like, well, yeah, I, I don't want... I remember when I went to Indonesia, and they're like, yeah, this guy has the, the jumping church. <laughs> That's what they called him. Remember that? They go, this guy has the jumping church. And I said, well, what do you mean the jumping church? He goes, well, they jump. All of them jump and worship. And I'm like, I don't think I've ever been to another church. like that. And then I thought about it. I was like, yes, I have. See, but there's different revelation. <laughs> See, I feel like God's going to take all of the restrictions off of our worship tonight. God is saying, I'm going to give you fresh oil. And if you're willing to spend that oil, come on, somebody. we got to spend the oil. I, I, I want to just say this is that you can hold on to all the oil. I meet some people, man, that they got a gift from God and they don't want to use it except for when it's going to benefit them. I'm like, man, that is a dirty prophet. You know what I'm saying? People, oh, yeah, I mean, if you, they'll, they'll, faith without hence is dead. I, I had people that were like, I was like, I met them, and I was like, hey, can you pray for me? And they're like, you know, the prophetic works better when you sow a seed. And I'm like, forget it, dude. I'm good. I'll go find a little kid. Can you pray for me? <laughs> no, legit. Some of you have had it happen. You know, uh, listen, you know, what that, you know what that tells me? They got the tiniest little bottle of oil, and there's a fly in it. Come on, Book of Proverbs talks about... The anointing oil with a fly in it. Come on, we don't need no... What, what is a fly? You know, flies hang around dead stuff. Rotting flesh. Right? See, but we're about to hook up to the deep, deep oil, the deep rig. Ha <laughs> ha! Unrefined oil straight from heaven. Ha <laughs> ha! No more flies in the anointment oil. We need pure worshipers. And we need to not try to tell people what that looks like. It might look different for each one. You know what I'm saying? It's about heart-to-heart -heart connection with the king. About allowing him 
to love on us. Some people are looking to men or women. They got hero worship in their hearts instead of Jesus worship. And the reason why you haven't got your breakthrough or deliverance is because you're still looking to people instead of looking to the king. Oh, but you know what I love? (laughs) We're going to be... You know what's beautiful about a broken box is that there's a fragrance that fills. Let me just give you a hint. You are the box. You're the box. And every time you worship... Woo, every time you get out of the box, come on. Every time you start to you start to throw yourself down at the altar, you worship, you start to pray in the spirit. Every time you start to do that, what's in you starts to come out of you because the kingdom of heaven is within. And I'm telling you, the fragrance of God, that, that 2 Corinthians 2.14, it starts to be made manifest. And people that are unsaved, they go, oh, what is it about you? I got to have it. I got to have what you got. Come on, I want you to stand with me. <laughs> Can I get someone to take this uh, pulpit and just put it up on the top, please? You know what I also felt like the Lord was saying, too, is that there's going to be oil changes tonight. (laughs) It's going to be oil changes tonight. Come on, how many know if your vehicle can't drive without an oil change every once in a while? We can't function without new oil, right? But you know what's even better is when you go to the, I don't know, the, the Jiffy Lube. You pull up, and they're like, 14 minutes service, guaranteed, you know? And then they look at you, and they go, you got the lower oil, but the premium's on sale. It's only like $5 more, but most people are going to go, heck no, you know, or $10 more. But if you had a nice car, it'd probably make it drive smoother, right? but people don't get it because they're unwilling to pay the price. Then they wonder why the car wears out quicker and things, you know? Come on, you're only going to get out of what you, you're only going to get out of things what you put in. You can be gifted and not see the flow of miracles. You could be gifted and every once in a while you hit it with a prophecy, but there's not a river of prophecy in you. <laughs> the oil that's there, that's resting upon your life, that there's a flow. Come on, these guys are getting into the, the rig. <laughs> Woo. See, that oil is costly, but that oil is beautiful. And you know what? The, 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 sometimes you got to get undignified to get the, the oil. Oh, God's going to release fresh oil tonight. The fresh oil of revival, the fresh oil of first love, the fresh oil of power, the fresh oil of miracles, the fresh oil of visitation, the fresh oil of encounters. Come on. Come on, he's recreating ankles tonight. Necks. Come on, that fractured arm, that pain is gone. There's some of others, there were some others that got healed too. You know who you are, and you know what? Praise the Lord for that. That's awesome. See, this is what I love about revival is after almost eight years, I stopped trying to figure it out. I just know that, you know, my, I remember Bob Jones told me, he goes, son, there's three things you got to do to be successful in ministry. And I said, what's that? Bob, he said, show up on time. And then he said, And don't try to figure out what you're doing and rely on the Holy Ghost. And you know, he told me that, but it wasn't until revival broke out that I actually thought about it and was like, he's right. Because after the first 29 days, I preached every message I ever knew. (laughs) I didn't have any more messages. And all I did was show up on time, keep my heart clean and mind clear, and just go, Holy Spirit, help me. (laughs) and read the word like crazy but I feel like I feel like tonight we're going to go from a a little vial to an alabaster box 
a broken, open alabaster box that everywhere we go, any room. Listen, I can tell you this right now. Any city this guy goes to is going to be filled with the fragrance of heaven. Don't let him be the only fragrance filler. Come on, we should fill our workplaces. We should fill our, our cars. We should. I've had where I was worshiping in my car. I've had two different times, no, three different times. One time, rolled the window down. The guy fell out under the power. A cop pulled up, said, what are you doing? He ended up getting healed, and he ran off. And then uh, another time, there was a demon-possessed guy came into my car, pushed a button, rolled down, power hit him, and he went, ah, and he ran down the street. And the other time, uh, I won't talk about, but... But it's just how much, like Finney, how much oil can we, can we carry? <laughs> how much fragrance? See, the world, the reason why I brought up the oil with the, the fly in it is because the world is living for the flesh. And flies are attracted to what? Wounds. You know how the devil stops the church from getting the oil? Offense. Wounds. When there's something that's being, when there's something that, that is an open wound and it's being, it's a festering wound, those flies keep coming back. Keep coming back. You know, my horse got a little, little cut on his bottom of his fetlock and his foot. The flies were attacking him, and he was so uncomfortable. He would do this, and, but we got the ointment. <laughs> the vet brought the ointment. Come on, how many know Dr. Jesus is bringing the ointment tonight? So we take him, we take him on our, our driveway, and we hang some food down. And the normal people that aren't used to the horses are like, what is happening? There's a horse in that driveway. Like, and We're spraying his foot down with the water, and I got to hold his foot up, and it's cold, and he's kind of like, eh. You know, and, and then I put that oil on him, and, and afterwards he's he's back to eating again. You know? yeah. See, some of y'all need some ointment to come tonight, the oil of the Holy Ghost. And you know what he's going to do is he's going to he's going to smear it in our wounds. Any place of offense, uh, some of you are all good. You are. You're, you're on fire. You're going for it. You're going. You're going to receive that oil. You already. You're already halfway down into the waters, getting that thing rigged up. But but others of you, come on. We don't want you to miss out. We want you to get the oil. Come on. He's going to break all witchcraft, every covenant with witchcraft. He's going to break all uh, word curses. He's going to remove all shame, all fear. Listen, I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been. It doesn't matter. Uh, some of you are going to get your innocence back because of things that happened to you. Oh, and that oil, that, that ointment, the oil is going to come and, and God is going to heal up the wounds and the flies are going to go and you're going to flow. Come on, somebody. And you're going to be tapped in to that underwater, deep sea glory, the, the oceans of God's love. Woo! The deep places that only He can take you to. <laughs> Some of you online, you'll be like, eh. I'm telling you, here's what we're about to do. Whoop! Whoop. Whoop. We're about to go deep. Whoop. You're going to get in the submarine of glory. Come on, somebody. Oh. Then we'll get the oil, and then we'll come up, and we'll just let the seer anointing out over the top. There's one over there that needs some help. Release the torpedoes. <laughs> Listen, I want you to, if there's any place, and let's just be honest, if we're hurting, just ask him to touch us. Here comes that oil. Lord, I thank you that you release the balm of Gilead, that healing oil that removes the shame, removes the pain. <laughs> Lord, just like you healed Prince, in his walk. I think you're going to heal people in their walk tonight. That's my horse, by the way. Mm. I'm serious. I, I, I see the Lord just removing things. I see him. It's like we're, we're, some of you are fending the flies off. Like he was, and Listen, God loves you so much. He's, he's removing everything that stinks, everything that hurts, everything that's rotten, everything that's... <sighs> festering 
I can tell you, I see the bottle. I know what it's called. Do you want to know what the, uh, the anointment is that's going to heal people? It's called forgiveness. And you know, I have a feeling that one of the number one things that need to be forgiven is to forgive yourselves for mistakes that you made. You might have messed up more than anybody's ever messed up in the history of all your friends. So what? If you're sorry about it, come on, God, he's, he's not going to leave you festering. He's about to take you into the deep. You're about to get on the rig city of the, the deep things of God. You're about to have access to the oil that nobody else has access to. He's going to restore your calling. He's going to restore your worship. He's going to restore your business. He's going to restore your family. He's going to restore because he's the God of restoration and he's also going to put so much oil on you that you're going to fill rooms with the fragrance of Christ. You're going to fill people's hearts. Uh, you're going to be someone that God uses to release the healer. You're going to be someone that, that's used to release the voice of the Father. You're going to be someone that sees where others don't see and you're going to have an encounter with the Lord that changes destinies. Come on, who's ready to break open an alabaster box tonight? Come on, Stevie, let's go. <laughs> let's go, bro. We're going we to worship God right now. I'm warning you, we're about to dive into the deep end. We don't even know what's about to happen. Holy Spirit, have your way tonight, God. Oh, I thank you. You wipe away, Lord God. You, you, you remove, Lord, every festering room, everything that would, would cause the flies, Lord. We, we rebuke the Lord of the flies, and we command them to go. And, Lord, I thank you that right now we're going deeper. We're going deeper with the King. We're going deeper with the Savior. We're going deeper, Lord, with our Father tonight. Oh, Holy Ghost, take us into the deep waters. Lord, I thank you that it's not the ankle deep or the knee deep or the waist deep, but it's head over hills and it's into the ocean of your love. Come on, the rivers run into the ocean. Oh, he's going to take us. Woo! Come on, we're going into the we're going into the oil well. <laughs> yeah. Woo. We're going into the well with Jesus, the oil well. Come on, get undignified. Who cares what Judas thinks?
coming to my inner chamber. Open your eyes, see the inner chamber. It's a place for. You and I, I've prepared for Let me sweep you I'll show you true love I'll show you true love I'll show you true This is the place beyond the sound and the words. There is a place beyond the songs and words. And only So let me go down, down, down deep into your heart and remove all the inhibitions. This whole weekend has been a process of elimination so I can open your eyes to revelation and open up your heart to impartation of true love you've been purified You've been pruned, and tonight I have poured out healing oil. your eyes. 
eyes on yourself removes the lies the snake would tell so you can go to the garden where you and I can dwell as one, as one, as one, as one, 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 For the lies of the snake Were the only thing that separates It's the lies the snake that caused humankind to recognize shame and brought your eyes away from the name of the Lord and brought self-awareness and away from God-awareness self-conscious not God conscious but here in this place I'm causing I'm causing the lies of the snake the childhood traumas the wounds of the fathers I'm causing them to fade away to come back to truth I've restored your soul. And there's a sound that's been released this weekend. up the floodgate and broken through the ground to a new dimension of me, says God. I have poured out the wine of awakening to awaken the sleeper. fragrance of worship, the oil, that costly oil, is your portion in the coming season, and the sound of worship is amplifying and increasing, and the sound of worship will make a space for the glory to inhabit, 
For I am enthroned upon the praises of my people. I'm enthroned upon your praises, says the Lord. And so as you go forth into the increase, I've equipped you this weekend with a sound. A new sound, but it's an ancient sound, and it's a sound for such a time as this. To bring down the increase and to make way for the increase. For it says, it says in, in the book of Isaiah that the, the trailblazers lift up a sound to clear out the space, to clear out the highway. yet had the sound of worship yet but this weekend you have broken through with a sound and you have tapped into a deeper dimension of glory a higher level of maturity Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem. Speak kindly to fire and glory. Call out to her that her warfare has ended. That her iniquity has been removed. That she has received of the Lord's hand double for all the sin, for all the impurity, for all the trouble, for all the warfare, double. The purification came out on Thursday night. It was the first key. The Lord placed in my spirit the key that he says, this is what I am doing right now. I'm clearing the way. I'm clearing out the way to make room for the glory and now that you've been pruned he says there's a sound that I've awakened in you a sound an ancient sound that awakens the ancient wells and breaks through breaks through from glory to glory to deep to deep to deep to deep to deep to deep, to deep. a voice is calling clear the way Clear the way, clear the way. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Make smooth the way for our God in the year 2024. Let every valley be lifted up. Let every mountain be laid low. And let the rough ground become a plain and the rugged terrain, a broad valley. 
then the glory of the Lord will be revealed. Yes. This is what he's done this weekend. This is what he's doing as you go forth. All flesh will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, call out. Get yourself up on a high mountain, O Zion, bearer of good news. For behold, the Lord will come with might, with his arm ruling for him. The way has been cleared. You've been purified. And I've given you a voice. I've given you the words. I've given you the sound. I've given you the sound to call forth the glory. To break through to glory. To break through to the new wine and the new oil. right now and receive it. There's a fresh impartation even now. He's sealing what he's done this weekend. The sound, the sound, the sound, the sound, the sound. Breaks. The sound of worship. respond to the heavens and the heavens will respond to the earth and the earth will respond to the new wine new oil you've been purified to make way to make space for the new wine new oil for the increase of heaven for the increase of his government of his government there shall be no end. New wine, new oil. Of the increase of your government there will be no end. New wine, new oil. Your warfare has ended and your purification has taken place. Now get ready for the increase. He said, just like David said, when he was looking for the breakthrough for Israel, and he was offered the materials, 
with no cost. But David responded, I will not offer the Lord something that has cost me nothing. I will give him, I will give only to the Lord something that has cost me. So we pour out right now on the altar of this weekend, Lord, everything that has cost us something, the good and the bad and the ugly, we put it on the altar, Lord. Everything you've pruned us of, Lord, everything, everything, we give you everything, 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 everything. And we place it on the altar, we place it on the altar. I know the plans I have for you to give you strength to keep you safe to bring you back and make you whole again I am restoring everything that was Call my name and I will answer with your whole heart. Seek me, you will find. There is a balm in Gilead. There is a balm in Gilead. There is a balm. of his government this weekend brought a purification and a release and a sacrifice of all that's in your heart and he placed an awakened sound of worship a sound of adoration that brings forth the increase the increase the increase the increase break through down through the deep deep waters into the ground 
the oil from the underground. And the way has been cleared. The way has been cleared. This weekend was a prophetic, appointed, and anointed time to bring forth his perfect destiny, to prepare the way, prepare your destiny, prepare, prepare fire and glory for the greater glory. We're ready 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 for the greater glory. Is it there? Through the chaos and in the noise, I am speaking with a still small voice. He says, My eyes are upon my hands and a mother will forget the baby at her breast and even yet I will not forget you God you have searched and
even yet. He says, I will not forget you. Oh God, you have searched and known my heart. You have held, you've held my every thought. Oh, shepherd of my soul, lead me only everlasting road, everlasting. Who sees, who sees me, there is a God who hears my voice, there is a God who loves and desires, he desires, he desires to be known. Drawing close, he is ever drawing to be <laughs> beneath the shadow of your wings what a safe place to be in your perfect destiny what a safe place to be Constantly in front of your eyes, you've unlocked. dimension of worshiping us this weekend and simply by showing us your beauty it's your beauty Lord there's just something about you Jesus that every time I see a new side of you my heart responds how beautiful how beautiful and it 
it takes me deeper in you. And my worship leads me on deeper in you. And my worship is the light that leads me deeper into, into the mystery of your heart. And even there, Lord, you use the worship that you've unlocked to keep pulling me in and deeper. You've, wor- you've used my worship, Lord. You use my worship every time it brings me deeper and I see a new side and then a new door and then a new room and a new place. In a new place, a new place unlocks and is revealed. That's why the creatures cry, holy. Every time they see a new sight. Worship. Worship is the response to your beauty. And worship is the articulation of what we see in the beauty. It's the only response. For when you said, seek my face, my heart responded, your face will I see. Lord, when you said, seek my face, my heart responded, your face will I see. bask, Lord, beneath the shadow of your wings, and we look into your eyes of mystery.
I'm being enveloped by your beauty. As they gaze upon your beauty, Whoa. revelation is constantly unfolding. This is why the creatures are filled with eyes, filled with eyes, filled with eyes, eyes. eyes. To see Talk with you in the 
Drift away to eternal beauty. I want to drift away. the shadow Yeah. 
your spirit like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Saint, come into the realm, dimension of my pleasure. Step into bliss. I'm taking you by the hand, <laughs> Whoa. and I'm taking you into the dimension of my pleasure, my pleasure. My pleasure, my pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Open up the door to pleasure. You opened up the door to holy pleasure. You opened up the door to pleasure.
satisfied in the fatness. <laughs> showed me a pure river clear as crystal proceeding from the throne of God from the Lamb in the middle of its streets and on either side of the river was the tree of life which bore twelve fruits each tree yielding its fruit every month come on those leaves were for the healing of the nations. Listen, I just was seeing withered leaves being refreshed tonight. And I felt like the Lord said there are gifts that are being refreshed by the river tonight. There are gifts that are being restored. And even as a plant can get a withered leaf and it looks like things are dying away when the water's added. New life comes forth. New fruit comes from the shoot. <laughs> and I feel like even right now, the withering has been renewed. <laughs> and you know what I love about the river, especially the river in heaven? You know the best water to drink? I got this bottle of Fiji water. The best water comes out of underground springs where there's volcanic hot springs. And it comes out and it's purified water. Some of you go, what does that have to do with the throne? Daniel chapter 7. The prophet sees the Ancient of Days seated upon the throne. And as he sees him, there is a river of fire that proceeds from the throne and it goes out. See, we read about Revelation 22 here. The clear crystal waters that come from the throne of God. But see, just like the best water on earth comes from a pure source and there's a volcanic fire that heats it up and purifies it and adds the minerals and the things that we need. Come on, how many know that the Ancient of Days, the Lamb of God, the Holy Spirit, come on, woo, the ones that rule, the one who rules on the, the throne, how many know that that, that fiery source releases the clean, pure water that releases the fruit, that releases the life, that releases the leaves that are healings for the nations. Come on, I'm, I'm telling you, some of you are going, you're looking leafy tonight. And there's fruit coming. <laughs> Woo, people are going to eat the low-hanging fruit off of your lives. Ha, <laughs> ha, No more withering, says the Lord. But only freshness 
life, favor. <laughs> you know, I remember one time I was waiting on the Lord and I went into the river in the spirit, had this encounter. And I was walking on the banks and Jesus said, jump in. I jumped, I jumped in with him and when I jumped in, I could see the bottom of the river and all the stones were different color gemstones. It was beautiful. Rubies, emeralds, sapphires, all these different color stones. And I was swimming around and I could see them down at the bottom. And you know, you can jump in a river on the earth and you, you go into there and it's just a bunch of rocks. That's not how it is in the heavenly dimension. Everything's beautiful. <laughs> Streets like gold. Pearly gates. If you read about the new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven, come on, all the walls are beautiful stones. <laughs> See, why do we do what we're doing right now? It's because we get glimpses on this side of what's to come when we go to be home with Jesus. See, we don't have to wait till we get there to see him and encounter him. We can encounter him right now. Oh, see, some of you are receiving the, the fiery river tonight. <laughs> Others are receiving that crystal clear. But I want to tell you something that's a mystery about the river. Here's, here's the mystery. It's on all these bottles. It says, bottled from the source. So this is why the river is important in the church and why the devil comes against the river and doesn't want us to soak is because if you can get into the river and you're smart enough to swim upstream it'll lead you right to the king see so people that go I don't know how to get with Jesus get in the river and when it starts flowing turn around swim upstream come on how many know we got to swim against the nominal we got to swim against what everybody's saying sometimes sometimes we got to we got to swim in the opposite direction as the crowd but see every time the river shows up it's actually a pathway to the source. Oh. So, Lord, we thank you right now that you release a revelation of what Ezekiel saw in Ezekiel 47. Come on, he was in the, he was in the, the throne on the threshing floor of the, the, the throne room and the, the water was going out and we always preach it ankle deep knee deep, waist deep, head over heels because that's what the progression was but what if we just go backwards oh. imagine a generation that when they get dry and thirsty they go to the river dive in, and they swim upstream they emerge they're walking knowing they're about to get closer to the king. And when it gets ankle deep, you're about to walk through the door and encounter the source, the person. Oh. Come on, who wants that impartation? Come on, just put your hands out and just... Mm. Lord, we thank you, God, right now <laughs> for source anointing. <laughs> We thank you, God, that there's a pathway that leads to your presence. And that pathway is your, your river. <laughs> there is a river that makes glad the city of our king. So, Lord, I pray right now that you'd release encounters in this place. That, Father, as we leave tonight, that, Lord, that anointing of the river would fill our homes, would fill our cars, would fill our workplaces, schools, wherever we go, that, Lord, we would release the river because, Lord, you said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me. Oh, and those that thirst, when they go to him, he said, out of their bellies, out of their hearts would flow rivers of living water. 
Lord, I thank you that, God, when we're touched by the river, we release the river. That, Lord, when we're in the river, we carry the river. And, Lord, we pray right now, God, that you would release that realm. Saturate us. Soak us. Pull us higher. Ah, deeper. Woo. Oh, Jesus. that was right it's you digging one of them underground wells again the, 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 down in the deep and the killer well went by
Who's love to the Father tonight? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'm in a flood. <laughs> Come on, can we give Jesus a big hand, you guys? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, you can float around for a little bit, and uh, <laughs> we'll be back next week. Sammy Robinson's going to be here Thursday night, throwing it down. Come out and be with us. Hey, can we give Stevie a big hand, you guys? It's been amazing. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, he's, uh, he's going to be flying out tomorrow, but you go on iTunes and take him home with you. Download his, his CDs and support his ministry that way and yeah how, how many you want how many want for Stevie to come back again yeah. and again and again <laughs> I told him I was like man we got to have you we have you a bunch of times next year so come on well bless you guys we'll see you tomorrow or well I don't know <laughs> we'll see you sometime <laughs> I will see some of you tomorrow. <laughs> uh, amen. <laughs>